They shot a movie once in my hometown. Everybody was in it for miles around. Out at the speedway, some kind of Elvis thing. Well, I ain't no movie star, but I can get behind anything. Yeah, I can get behind anything. <laughs> I wanted the whole song, man. You could have kept on going, guys. Get it, out. it was sounding good. It was sounding good. All right, everybody get back in their lane now. I'm here. Welcome. Welcome to the construction life. Jason, you're back for a second round. Yes. Yeah, There's thanks, been a few, a few people coming back a few times, but you guys are all newbies now. Fresh. Yes. We've been talking for, I don't know, ever. For a while. Long. Oh, I I came down to a techno metal post. Oh, that's right. That's the last time I saw you. Seminar you a did. A little lunch Luncheon, thing that they yeah. did where it was actually tasty. And it uh, was. Yeah, it was pretty. It was actually about 25 of us there. Yeah, there was a good group of people. They don't do that anymore, man. That's a shame. Well, I guess because of the whole pandemic bullshit. And maybe they yeah. start doing it again. But I mean, like, they should be doing that. I think we're at that time. Maybe I'll start doing them in here. I think you should. You, we, we could fit 25 guys in here. Yes. <laughs> that was a quick yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, family show. Yeah. Family show. Welcome, guys. Honestly, welcome. We're going to have an interesting show today because we've got a nice little cross section. You got two GCs and you got a framer on your own for the first time. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, you can't call me sir, man. I'm not that much older than you. And I'm not authority, and I don't have a uniform on. No way you can call me sir, man. Force a habit. Yeah. <laughs> Let me start. So Jason Guest, Guest Contracting is back on the show. www.guestcontracting.com. And the email is guest.contracting at gmail.com. And then the young fella there, Clark Walker, Walker's Custom Frameworks, owner, operator. Brand new. Look at this. One. 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 Clark at walkerscfw.com, and on Facebook, it's walkerscfw, and on Instagram, it's walkerscfw. And then the man, John, here we go, McNeil, McNeil Construction, owner, nine years. There's, you know, that's a good number. It's not bad. It's Ten not would bad. be better. Ten would be, it's, that's next year. McNeilConstruction.ca, and it's John, no H, John at McNeilConstruction.ca, and it's McNeil Construction. <sighs> Shout out. Uh, what am I wearing? Custom quality. <laughs> I had to look for a second. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for the tea. I actually like this little baby blue. It's kind of nice, man. Looks good on you. Uh, They're thanks, great man. guys. I appreciate it. They're great guys. They work electrical and contracting as yep. well, too. They helped so, me on a few jobs. Oh, did they really? Yep. That's right. They're up in your neck of the woods. Uh, no, they're down. I should, no, I should know this better. Uh, like Aurora Way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. To me, that's up. To you, that's down. It's down. That's where it is, yeah. Yeah, we came way down. I appreciate to get here. you guys coming down. Well, this is the home. I think after 250 shows, I figure I'd plant some roots and just be here. And then everybody has to come here, right? So awesome what do you guys want to talk about? I obviously want to talk about brand new framing in that whole world. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, we want to do Yeah, that. everybody look at me. <laughs> that's great. No, that will be talked about, yeah. right? But I want to know where, where Guess has gone as well, too, how everything's been going. It's got a sweet yeah. new contractor's cap. <laughs> that's not brand new no on his ford oh my god oh my oh, cab yeah, yeah. Okay, on his ford yeah i know yeah same thing we're gonna start with that huh yeah when are, did you put an order in for a lightning I, I did actually i did and i canceled it but why one of your buddies uh who does the custom doors i forget his i just talked to him custom doors uh i'd have to find him on instagram he does um he's, he's out of keswick he does like GTA and oh Luso, you're talking about yeah. Andrew? Yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, yeah, yeah. He Why? has one. He's got he's got he, a lightning. He bought a lightning. Yeah, I was asking him because he hauls a trailer with it and everything. Wow, about twenty five miles. <laughs> no, he said he it does pretty good. Like, was I, it the same office to get a mortgage and to get the truck? Maybe. <laughs> I know they're not cheap, eh? They're not. They're cheap. They're over a hundred. They're they're expensive. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna happen though. We're all gonna end up with electric trucks. Yeah, right? one sooner day. than later. Uh, one day. We're all going to end up in, a, in electric vehicles, you think? Everybody? I think so. The next 10, 15 years, for sure. No, I think I'll always have a combustible engine motorcycle, and I think I will always have a combustible engine vehicle. Yeah, you think so? I know so. Yeah? Yeah. I got another 50 years. I'll fight that electric battle <laughs> for the next 50 years. Well, you'll retire before that anyways. <laughs> no, but I'll still be pedaling around there. I mean, so oh. I'm, I'm not going to get into an electric. That's just me, man. Yeah. I That's think fun. it's great technology. So, but you John's getting a van too, actually. Electric? No, Lord, no. <laughs> Just a pro master. <laughs> okay, so that's smart. Yeah. Yeah. So you're leaving No no, just adding it to uh to our, our crew, I guess. 
Just something for the guys to get around in. Black, yeah. white? Black. Yeah. Don't wrap it, man. Just leave it No, black. no. Black, black, white looks, lettering. Black looks the coolest, yeah. man. And I just... What are you driving? Sorry? I got a couple of Dodge diesel trucks. Two? Yeah. I got an 04 single cab, and I got a 2018 crew cab. Yeah, so, so that's why we were kind of ragging on the Ford. On the Ford, Giving yeah. A hard time. But, you know, in all fairness, Dodge TRX, man. Yeah. Like... One day. Like, no, but... Jim's got one. Or maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's earned it. He's been in construction for No, he's just paranoid 200 about years stolen, or right? Cuz that thing goes right off the assembly line right into uh, the repair shop. Hand. Yeah, like no no. <laughs> <laughs> Gets right into someone's hand and it looks insane, man. They it's do. They're 700 nice horsepower? They are. Yeah, they sound the, awesome, they look awesome. They're the Hellcat motor in them, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I um, mean. So what's going on with the Raptors then? I mean, like, I don't understand. What's going know. on with GM? I don't know. I don't know. They're oh. on their, their 12th body change in four yeah. years and okay, I mean, like you selling see, trucks. You watch you watch Ford make a Raptor. You watch Dodge make a TRX. Then you watch GM. They don't have a high-end vehicle yet. But they just sell a lot Never of trucks. Never have. Is GM yeah. number one still? I think Ford is. I don't know. It depends on who you talk to. Dodge, obviously, is number one to us. True. I got yeah. an 04 diesel that just keeps going. But I see a lot of guys driving the Dodge, right? Because they're men. They're, no, af- they're affordable. They're, they're, chi- <laughs> they're cheaper. They are cheaper. I pay... The same truck on all three of them. I pay probably 150 200 bucks less for a Dodge with similar options to really? a Ford or a GM. And see, I go because I enjoy the comfort of the Dodge. Like, I sit in a four and I just get uncomfortable. Like, it's not a comfortable seat for me. And the Chevys, I find the seat is down too low and your legs are stretched out. So it feels like you're kind of sitting in a car more than a truck. And, I don't know, the diesel, it works great for me. I tow with it all the time. And the Dodge had the options I needed. And they didn't have to buy any special stuff on top of that. So I could get what I wanted without having to pay more. Diesel's been expensive this year. It has. Actually, the last three years has been expensive. Yeah, it's not cheap. Why they do that to us? Because a lot of guys are going into diesel land. You know what, though? My lead hand just got back from BC, and he said that it's $2.50. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Right there. In the brief moment I look at the news. I was like, holy. I know, it's insane. Even regular was approaching like two forty. dollars So are you guys factoring that into your businesses when you guys are quoting? At this point, you have to. I mean, we're, I'm... I'm fortunate. I think these guys are the same too that we're, you know, within Barry mostly. So it's not terrible. You know, 15, 20 minutes you're around Barry. Still, you could probably factor some fuel in. Yeah. But it'd be different maybe if you're down here where 45 minutes to an hour to try to get from, you know, one site but, to another. But I say that. What about your jobs in Muskoka? Like Huntsville, Bracebridge? Like now we're, let's. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about those ones. Uh, oh, yeah, they were rough. You have to factor far. that. And I mean, not only are you sitting in the vehicle for an hour, hour and a half each way, now you're spending, you know, you're a tank of gas every two days. Like that's hard pill to swallow. Yeah. But I mean, are your clients giving you the fuel face? Like it's not really their problem? No, I mean, uh, I think we've been fortunate enough to deal with people that kind of get it. Okay. You know, have that conversation up front, you know, talk about the fact that fuel is through the roof. You want to educate all the clients in Toronto? (laughs) You can try. No, but uh, I've had that before on a job that was an hour and a half away and trying to get one way travel and they didn't, they, they disagreed. I just think it's different now. I think, I think people. Even one way they disagreed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think people understand a bit more now, you know, you still have to kind of pound it in the odd time, but if you dial back two to three years I think people probably look at you sideways if you're worried about fuel. What was fuel before the pandemic? I remember when Just the pandemic started, it was like 55 cents a liter. Was no. no, that yeah. was that like... Low? Yeah. No, it got down there. because I, I, I was in high school. The, 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 yeah, job, no. the job that the, the custom quality boys helped me on was downtown Toronto. They okay. came in and did all their wiring. Okay. And I remember getting on the highway, and it was like the walking dead. There was nobody on the highway cruising downtown 55 cents and it got down to like 55 to 60 cents i don't remember that yes i don't really? remember yes. being uh, that, that low 
Not for a long, long, like when I was a kid, I remember that. That's what I mean. That's why it stuck with me. Maybe I'm, I don't know. I mean, I've. Could have been yeah. off there. Yeah, I got your a time dollar, A dollar fifty-five. No, yeah. no, no, it was no. down. It was down. That's where we're at right now. Like way yeah. down. Yeah, you guys. For regular Way guys. down. I got to buy death fluid too now. That, don't even get me started I, on that. I, I don't go through that I much death in my diesel. I hate that. So, I mean, everyone knows that I sold my van. Yeah, and I got a pretty penny for it. It was it was actually pretty funny, and I'll I'll just share this. I mean, I it was a 2015. I paid 47, no, sorry, 42 for it. Well, that's really good, right? It was just base, just regular van, right? And then I sold it earlier this year in March. I listed it for 35, sold it for 34. I had it for seven years. That's phenomenal. That's season. Yeah. That's awesome. So when I was selling it to the guy, and, and because I got a lot of calls, right? And I, I just, the guy said, well, listen, I understand that you got to put death fluid in and it looks like you're low on it because it just started. Like it was just, it wasn't the countdown. It was just a warning, right? right. So I said, he says, you're going to have to go buy some death. And I was like, okay, I'm going to leave now if you don't want the van. And then he ended up buying the van. I'm not going to get death. I'm not going to go buy because death is sold what? In pairs. I buy it in singles. From where? Uh, generally, a couple gas stations up by my house have it. And it's like... 25 26 bucks a jug and i've got my truck figured out where it goes down right where i can fit a full jug into it so i never have to carry one but that's ben's ben's has got it so then as soon as it warns you that you're about to be low you can fit a full jug yeah so i just mine just like a they only gauge. sell it in pairs so you have to buy two jugs so one jug sits there until you need it the next time like so do, do they have a proprietary def fluid at ben's no it's just in a it doesn't even said Ben's on it. I just whatever you get the same shit at death. Yeah, that's all. You can get it at Canadian Tire. I could just see it being a special death. Nah, it's not. Those are the the caps and everything like that. (laughs) (laughs) Don't get me started on Ben's and service, man. Ben's and service is an absolute joke. I don't know what it is like. Who's got the best service here? GM, Ford, or Dodge? So my my service plan includes getting the truck, driving it for one and a half to two years, just doing the oil change. That's then, it. And then sliding it back in. But you're buying brand new. Yes. You're rolling it over. How, yeah. many, how often do you do the oil, ch- oil changes? Uh, they gave me a gauge, and I use that gauge. So it's like 15,000 K. That's not bad. What's it for the Ford? Uh, so I bought mine used, and I just go every every 10,000. Take like, it to, to okay. Ford, de- the dealership. And your older Dodge? I just do everything myself. Of course you do. <laughs> I, go to Can- I, I wait for the oil to go on sale at Canadian Tire, the 18-liter jug, and I get two or three of them, and then when oil changes come around, I do an oil change. I got oh. pictures last night. He was doing his oil change, and his truck bent the ramps. Yeah, I got those, like, metal ramps, you know, the old drive-on ones? Yeah. So I've had them forever. I'm pretty sure they're my dad's. And you're using that to yeah. elevate so I just, it? I drive up to- on them and climb under and change the oil, and it does its thing. And last night, the sheet metal was just worn out enough. It literally went flat and then up a couple chunks of lvls under there to help hold the ramps up and yeah. then the ramps were just <laughs> okay so new guy let's talk about your ministry of labor visits man at that point <laughs> <laughs> that's at home that's on the home turf <laughs> man you and that was perfectly safe uh no i backed off them i okay. didn't do it all right okay cool yeah. that would have been an instagram or a tiktok video at that point right? yeah no <laughs> i'm gonna I'm tag sweet. him later in a story post yeah i'm smarter than that one uh, all right, you guys want to talk a lot about this, but it was funny that I had someone reach out to me, and I know you've been on TV, right? No, 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 someone, no, have you? Have you done any of the shows? Okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason is someone sent me a message today, earlier today, and uh, how do I put this without uh, getting screwed over, or whatever? Anyway, so somebody from TV land was somewhere speaking and their name has been formalized now and all of their titles have been like attached to their name on top of on top of so they they have all these titles now attached to this person and i i looked at this formalized name now and i looked at all these titles and none of it is applicable to this person and i'm just looking at this i go why is it that i guess on a social media platform do we have to present ourselves something that we're not why is that so i just someone sent it to me and i was like okay wtf i don't give a shit who cares and then they started sending me some more little key points of the conversation and i just said okay again i don't give a shit i really don't care right but people are doing that and and that's i only want to bring up the reno actor bullshit thing right because 
everyone, I guess there's a certain section, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, there's a certain section of our industry that feels that, okay, they rally behind them, and all of a sudden they're like, okay, so they're authority, I guess, to the industry. I'm not saying that. Somebody else is saying that. But what the one thing that I do respect about them is that they've nicely figured out how to abuse the construction industry to become very wealthy. That's how I describe it. Versus tradespeople work in the industry and and they earn an honest dollar but they don't have a voice to share the industry right so i just when i look at a formalized name and all these titles attached to this person who's abused the industry and all of a sudden is making a shitload of money from it you kind of want to speak up but we don't have a large enough voice i feel we're working on that right now are you well I mean, this this is a platform. This is a great platform for guys like us to have a voice. You know, you've got a pretty good reach. Yeah. It's only growing. Yeah. I love that. You know, so, um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I recently, my guys and I had an experience. Can't really talk about it much. Uh, we did enjoy it. And people within the inner workings of that production were very good at you know, saying that obviously who's involved is not doing the work. Yeah. It's presented a different way because it has to be because that's, you know, that's, that's how TV. it's... TV. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, they, they worked with us head on in efforts of getting a very substantial renovation done. It wasn't just lipstick and makeup. Okay. You know, we went very deep into this, this project and did the full gambit of what a... I don't want to say what a runo should be, but there wasn't much that was left out. You did the proper work yes. that should have been done yes. for this project. And there was no no corner cutting. You know, there was a there there was a budget, there was a scope. And it, we adhered to that up until we ran into an issue and a conversation had to be had. Okay. Clients were involved, you know, everybody was involved. This is off camera, of yeah. course. Okay. And things were sorted out money was added to the budget in order to deal with these issues. That's actually really good to hear, John. Yeah. Like, like honestly. I, you know, listen to you for quite a while. You know, you hear the good and the bad. Yeah. You know, you get different points of views on, on these situations. And obviously, you know, it's it's a 30-minute, 40-minute episode. You can't, can't fix everything. the world. You yeah. can't do everything. And, again, these guys were very good about not, not, pretending to be what they weren't at okay. least for when it came to dealing with me okay again you know you got to make a, a show out of it i get that and you know they were very good at dealing with both sides when you watched i assume you watched the show yes yeah, so i finished the finished show uh so my we're not on till next year oh okay that's why right. i can't really say got it, much I got it. um but you're hoping that when you do watch the show it's going to be a fair representation of what was really happening? I think so. I mean, uh, I, I won't, you know, kid myself. Again, there's there's only so much time. Yeah. You know, we were doing this for four months. So try to condense four months into... Yeah, you know, half hour. Half it's, hour, It's very difficult minutes. to do that. Yeah. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be, you know, more of a, hey, look at, you know, we did check mark and a bucket list thing maybe, but... Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. It'll be it'll be for for TV, for okay. sure. All right. You know, I have all my photos and things I can talk about once it airs, of uh, you know what we did more yeah. in depth. I've got to take the homeowners through and and talk to that, talk to them about what we've done, show them photos. They have a better understanding about what happened because they couldn't see things through the whole process either. So, anyways, we'll see what it looks well, like. Well, I mean, that's refreshing to hear that, right? Because we all know what I guess the reality of what it's been like and they haven't like you it's funny you said that i've got a platform here and obviously the show's grown and and i'm i'm telling you right now the show's grown because of you guys you guys listen i'm still dumbfounded sometimes why right like i mean you guys listen but i i honestly believe it's because of the guests that come on and they're very open i've been complimented that i i create a certain environment where it allows people to open up right and and they'll share a bunch of stuff which is really informing the next generation or the current generation or the one that wants to actually edu educate because construction is about educating right so it's grown really well it's done very well it's refreshing to hear that a tv show that's in this industry is kind of stepping up now right because the majority of them don't 
lot it's, of fluff. It's all fluff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, so I don't know how you guys feel about it. I think you guys are pretty clear that I, uh, the way I feel about it, I, I'm not shy and I'm not a politician. And I've never backtracked, right? So it's like, this is how it is. And, and uh, my sadness, I guess, to that whole industry is that these people have become very wealthy. They're all millionaires. And they have an opportunity to actually present a very positive version of our industry. And I wish they would, but they don't. And I've been told by a few of them, Nobody wants to watch the reality of construction. I think, Manny, you should have a show. That's a whole other... <laughs> People would watch it. That's a People whole would, That's a whole other... I, would, I, would, I know. It like, would be... I, I would love to do one. Like, I would have a blast. But my whole problem is that you guys would be the stars. I would always hand it off. It'd be a baton, like, every single fucking opportunity. I would be blatant about, I didn't do that. John did that. I didn't do that. He framed it. I didn't do that. Jason did that. I'd constantly be doing that. And then they'd be like, why do you keep on giving credit to where people have done? Because they did the work. That's yeah. why I'm giving them credit. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to stand here and take the credit. I mean, I'm probably the PM and I, I did the job and I was supervising and I was organizing. And I was bringing the coffee. But I think that's an important part that people don't see, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like we've all had clients and they try and GC their own jobs, right? And it sometimes it goes well and sometimes not so well. And that's a really important role. Yeah. Like what you do. You guys, thanks, man. You, you have to. You guys, you guys are still on the tools. You're still going to be I, on the tools. I am. I'm doing a little bit of everything. Okay. So I'm, you're already transitioning. Yeah. I, I, you know, it depends on John's not on there, the tools. Well, I, He's not on the tools? There, there's days I'm on tools and I work best by myself. So no one ever sees me. You know, it's like a tree falls in the woods. Does it make a sound? Right? <laughs> um, you just cut it. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out of the way. Did you see him do trim? <laughs> Yeah, like it's 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 tough because yeah, I, I'm I'm doing the quotes. I'm you know doing the invoicing. I'm trying to make sure materials there. Make sure we have the tools we need. Make sure the sub trades are there. Make sure people are getting paid. Make sure we're getting paid. And it's tough. Like it's it's hard to find time. If I have a tool belt on, the the only tool in my hand is the bloody phone. Of course. And my guys look at me like, well, why are you here? <laughs> you know, like go away, because all I'm doing is just getting in the way. You know, so but it's, it's true that without that, yeah, then everything the else doesn't, doesn't happen. work. No. It doesn't work. And, yeah. And, and that's the hard point part where like you're getting to that point now, right? Where you're like, hey, I need to, I'm not on the tools anymore. No. And I, I like, you want to be, I, yeah, like I like it and I don't like it. You know, I've learned that there's some things I don't like doing. I, I never what? insulation. I've never, oh, well, no, no, like, no, I got to the point where I'm like, here, insulation guy come in, frame it. Come, I, everybody's coming in, man. I got rid of all that stuff. No. So Manny, qu question. Do you have any guys that work for you directly? No, I did. I had my, like last year for two years, I yeah. had a guy. Okay. Right. And so, nothing now. And that was it. Nothing. Okay. Right. So then it was all subs. Right. Yep. But I, I got used to subs, man. I like, I didn't, I didn't want to heavy lift anything. I didn't want to do anything. I literally want to, I was still showing up and be yeah. there, Oh yeah, yep. but I didn't want to do any, I wanted to just educate and teach and supervise and be that whole part of that, which you're eventually going to quickly do. And a lot of the senior guys do, and you're eventually going to get there as well too. You have yeah, to. Like I have, I just hired another guy today. So I got two guys, but John's got, how many, you guys got six or seven guys? With, with myself. So I don't know how far that goes, but uh, eight Total. Okay, that's a big. Yeah. It's a lot. It is. Uh, I mean, it started with me and uh, my main guy Zach, and that was from basically day one. I've known him for a long time, uh, and we just kind of started doing basement drywall. So you guys were doing everything. We do everything now. Um, you know, both of us have been in the union. Uh, we worked non-union as well, but all drywall, drywall related, steel framing, boarding, taping, T-bar. That's hard work, man. It is. You know, I mean, there's harder work out there for sure. Yeah. Um, and then we slowly, you know, someone one night, uh, you know, finishing up the taping on a basement, like, well, hey, can you guys do flooring? Like, absolutely. Get out the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up a YouTube yeah. video, you know, <laughs> figure out how to do floors. And then we started doing floors and then trim <laughs> and then something else. Then we're out of the basement. We're on the main floor. And then from the main floor, we're, you know, outside and yeah. things just progress. It doesn't stop. Yeah. No. So now I'm at a point where even with the amount of guys I have and all the guys can do a little bit of everything, I'm very fortunate for the guys that I have, I still need guys like Clark and Jason to come help at times and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, they can, they know they can call me 
it might not be me coming, but at least some of my guys <laughs> yeah. might go help. But you're a resource, right? Yeah. So, and and that's what this industry needs, yep. right? Like it, it, like you're just getting started, Clark, right? So yeah, I've been I've been in construction for like 15 plus years. Wait a minute, how young are you? 31. You're still a baby. Huh? I was getting. I have a, I have a ticket. <laughs> I got that boots my, older than you. I have man. a ticket that my dad got from the MOL because I was underage on site. <laughs> There's movie tickets on this table. Oh yeah, that's older, older, older than, than you, man. Fire. That's okay. I'll, I'll, okay I'll let you guys it. look at it later on. But booty calls in this table, okay? With Jamie Foxx, <laughs> one of the first movies he ever did. Booty calls in this table, man. But okay, so you're 31. You're just getting started. What was the reason why you went on your own? I know we talked before the mics were rolling. Because I got kind of capped out at an hour, hour salary. Yeah, that was hourly a former, salary. Former employer. Yeah. So I was kind of capped at a wage I was making with that company. Did you ask for an increase? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. And how was that And received? it was, it was well, I can't afford it right now when the time comes. And it was very frustrating because the company I worked for, the guy was a phenomenal guy, heart of gold. But he was trying to very early on not be on site and have guys on site for him. So days where we were like, I, it was me and one other guy, and the other guy was green as could be. And he's expecting all this stuff to get done and quoting based on timelines of three guys knowing what they're doing, doing a job, and him just not being on site. And then he would get frustrated because things wouldn't get done as fast and he wouldn't make money. But he's not yeah. contributing exactly. to the process. Exactly. So just time and time again, homeowners would be like, hey, you think you can come in the weekend and do this, right? Picking up odd jobs here and there. And uh, a friend of my girlfriend's sat me down that I did some work for, and he's like, listen, like, you're too talented to be stuck under somebody else and kind of gave me the riot act because he works for himself. And uh, I thought long and hard about it. And I went away to BC for Christmas to see my mom there last year. And over the two weeks, I kind of just slipped a switch and went, yep, it's going to happen. So in the four, I gave myself four months. I got lawyers, accountants, bookkeepers. I incorporated. I did all the things I knew that I don't know how to do so that I could be successful as soon as I started working. So who told you to get all that stuff? I reached out to a bunch of different guys, actually, like different people that I knew in the industry and said, hey, are you corporated or are you a sole proprietor? Why? And they kind of sent that way. And like, I'm not about to try and do my own payroll. No, one of the things you that shouldn't. No, mm -hmm. and one of the things that's important to me is my guys get paid on time every time. And there's no issue. And it's direct deposit. It's not, oh, here's a check Friday afternoon after the bank's closed. No, here's cash and envelope Listen, and a pay stuff. Checks don't exist anymore, man. Everybody's direct e-transfer. E it's automatic yeah. now. It's yep. is, so, right? yeah. And that's, Eventually that's, one day it's going to be Bitcoin. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? Like I just wanted to be, I you wanted to not have to worry about anything except for the job I'm working on. That's smart. So that's, Focus on yeah. where you are a superhero and do that work. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's a lot of detail in, in everything nowadays, right? So if I'm preoccupied with something else, I'm just going to shoot myself in the foot. What's the one lesson that you guys have learned over the last two and a half, three years? What's like, what's the one thing that might stand out that, you, that has actually contributed to a better business or a better, you're a better tradesperson because of it? I'd say for myself anyways, like learning that clear communication like really, really clear communication, whether that be the scope of work, uh, like being really transparent with payment with a client, because money's always like a can be a sticky situation. It's the elephant. It, it, it is the elephant yeah. in the room every time. So like, you know, for myself anyway, so I'll have like a change order. I have a change order. It, it lists everything, the price of the change order, and then the total that, that's changing it. You're doing the paperwork? I'm doing that, yeah. You're still doing the paperwork? I still do the paperwork. You don't yeah. find that consuming? Like you've done your work day and now you've got to take care of all that? S paperwork. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're up till I have kids, so I got to wait till they go to bed and do it afterwards. Get them to do the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and I can make lots of money. <laughs> but, but that's just part and parcel of it, right? Like yeah. it's just how it goes. But having clear communication with like, hey, this is exactly what we're going to do or whatever, right? I found like just just spending time talking more with clients or trades and just so you, there's no surprises, right? You show up and it's not like, oh, that's not what I meant. Like, I, I want to be very specific on what you want done, when you want it done, how you want it done. You know, that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to do myself anyways. Good. Clark? I'm paid by the square foot. So I charge by the square foot okay. and certain things will happen where door heights will want to be changed. They want to, they see an opening. Okay. Maybe we're going to make this bigger, that kind of stuff. And I'm so new into it. 
depending on the work, I'll do an hourly rate. Okay, it's gonna take me this long to do it roughly. This is what I charge per hour. When the house is done, then I'll go back and do that kind of stuff. Like say, hey, we got put an eight foot door and we want a nine foot door. It looks too low, right? Same thing, do that afterwards. And the couple's like five foot two? Yeah. <laughs> Looks great like though. 80 inch doors <laughs> and a 10 foot ceiling. Yeah. Looks great on Pinterest and house, man. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook marketplace. Yeah. Okay. So I'm still just figuring that stuff out as I go. It's kind of fly by. Yeah, you got my a pants. long way to go, but you'll learn quickly as For well sure. too. And then John. Probably following a lot of what Jason said. Um, I started doing jobs on a handshake. I learned business from a handshake at the age 18 working at a building supply store. Can I ask, have you ever been burned? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, First, second, or third degree? <laughs> pick, pick, pick a job. Okay, all right. All right. Um, okay, so you need some grafting. All right, no problem. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. You know what? I, uh, I, you know, it's part I, of the biz. I, I still, I hate to say, be, try to be happy-go-lucky, but I try to assume that people aren't assholes. And, you know, most of the time they aren't, but sometimes, like Jason said, when money gets involved, even the goodest, kindest-hearted person can turn so yeah we had a few jobs especially during the, the pandemic years um you know waterfront properties people presumably with you know money in the bank and oh, so is it money in the bank or is it line of credit in the bank yeah you know i mean e either way uh it didn't end up in my bank it stayed in theirs um and thankfully now a lot of the jobs are doing, they are bigger, you know, there's better contracts. There's, you know, there's better deposits, better structures. Listen to, uh, was it Phil from heavy. Yeah. I, that was very impressive. Yeah. What he said, and it made a lot of sense, you know, so there's some kind of notes from that. Listen this morning there, yeah. um, that I wouldn't mind trying to implement and slowly kind of ease in, um, and just staying on top of people. You know, it's very simple. Like today got a progress payment. Why? Trusses are on the house. Yeah. And it's very clearly stated, you know, in, in my my uh, my paperwork that once trusses were on top of that house, money was due. So there was no there's no weird conversation, right? Because it's there. They know it's there. They know it's coming. All I had to say was, you know, where's where's the check? You're an advantage, right, Clark? Because you're one of the golden trades, I would say the likelihood of you not being paid is very slim to none. It's already happened. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. By whom? The GC or by the homeowner? Homeowner. Not, I haven't been paid in full. Like there's a holdback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's. Oh, they're, they're dragging That one I was on. telling you about. Oh. Oh, for what? For back framing or what's going no, on? No, no, no. It was a clear, like it was. Uh, wow, I take my words back now because I was envious of you guys. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was, it was one of those things where Long story short, I did a, a, a project for a friend of mine and great friends, been friends forever. And there's a little item that he wanted added to the exterior of the home. Okay. And he kind of asked me to help him out. And I said, okay, well, when we're done, sure. Like I'll give you a hand, whatever. And it got taken as now that's part of your job. And I'm going to hold back two grand until you do it. And it's like, well, my... Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, sneaky. it's one of those situations. And in all honesty, if that's the way it's going to be over two grand, wipe my hands, walk away. Like, it is what it is, right? And, uh, but it's one of those things where it was like, I had to ask. Like, hey, final payment was due when framing inspection passed. That's my last little percentage was done. That ensures the customer, like, okay, I'm confident in my work, 100%. Framing inspection is going to pass. I got to send a text and go, hey, what's going on? Oh, by the way, that passed. Okay, so you want to send that payment now? Like, why do I have why to Why do you ask? have to chase it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. especially when someone's supposed to be your friend. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, that burned me a little bit, but if that's like these guys are saying, when money's involved, people get funny. But, I mean, was it you or was it one of you guys that told them that two grand is just... My no, it was me. Okay, just walk away. Yeah, like I'm I've, sorry, but that's actually the no. I've move. I've listened to quite. Fortunately, it is. I've listened to quite a few episodes, and one of those things is like stress versus money. Like, is it really worth yeah. going through all that stuff? Listen, myself guys, stress I'm reading David St. Clair lifespan. Stress is what kills us. Yeah, yeah, it's not so, worth it. Uh, technically speaking, we could live a thousand years if we wanted to, but stress contributes to killing us. Mm -hmm. So you got to look at and and unfortunately, clients take advantage of that. Yep. Or GCs or anybody that doesn't want to pay. Mm -hmm. No, I, I walked away from significantly larger amounts 
And I have two. It was just straight up due to what was that worth? Yeah. You know, to go through the the process of potentially maybe getting a portion a of that fraction. money. I know. What would I have to put out monetarily, you know, hours, days, weeks, years. stress, years. But here's the thing. You guys are family guys, right? It's not that I don't have, I don't have my own family, but I have a family, right? <laughs> um, that takes a toll. And you can't get those years back. So why do that? Like that, that should not, and that's the unfortunate thing. Like you said, you get, you get to meet some pretty shady people and hopefully you could just wish that karma might do something and that's it. You don't care for it. You don't need to know about it. You don't need to see it. You just wish that, okay, maybe karma teaches them a lesson because they've actually taken something away from my livelihood, my family, my everything. Right. Well, well, the one couple's house is still unfinished to this day. Well, how long are we talking about here? I came in probably six to eight months after the original contractor was what I thought thrown off the job. Uh, three sides. I, I'm pretty sure they just walked away. Probably. And uh, that was tw early 2020. And the house is still not? It might be further along now, but I, I know we... Is uh, it weather tight? It wasn't when I last saw it. So probably about s six months ago. It was not weather tight. There's going to be major problems with that house if you don't get weather tight and you've gone through a winter already. That's right? karma. That's the karma. But then they'll probably for sale. Well, I mean, the market. Yeah. I've been watching the meme at the start of the year. Average house is 1.2, almost 1.3. Now the average house is 800. This is dropping like a rock. I'm not smiling about it. I'm just no. saying that yeah. it's like it's changing. That's the market. There's lots of people. I've seen for sale signs in my hood and I'm like, uh, it's still up. No open house, no nothing. It's still up. What's going on here? I thought about selling at one point because a, a semi-detached on my street, and I don't live on the nicest street, sold for one point one. For a semi-detached, yeah. and I'm I'm a I'm a fully detached, and I back onto the park. I'm on the nice side. <laughs> so what do you have? Of the shitty five or so I, I figured. Wow. But then comparatively, where do you go? <laughs> you know, gentlemen, I yeah. want to ask you a little or share a little history here. What is the strongest material on earth to build with? Durabond. <laughs> <laughs> Graphene. Graphene. Graphene remains the strongest material ever measured. And as Professor Hone once put it, so strong that it would take an elephant balanced on a pencil to break through a sheet of graphene, the thickness of saran wrap. That's awesome. Let's I've get some of that. that. Yeah, what's yeah, up? Why are we not using yeah, that? Why, yeah, can we I get can some of that? Assume. So can graphene stop a bullet? Researchers from the Rice University found that 300 layers of graphene, which is, after all, at most 100 millimeters thick, uh, were capable of stopping such micro bullets. That's really cool. What is the longest lasting building material ever? Longest lasting. I say Durabond again. <laughs> <laughs> I no, know. I mean, Durban's hard, man. It is hard. The dap on my trim's doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Stone. Stone lasts a very long time and is one of the most durable materials to use in a building and construction. It can be more difficult to move and transport around due to its weight, but it's naturally resistant to all elements and is also aesthetically appealing. So put Makes some Durban all over that stone. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you got something, man. <laughs> you guys sent me a bunch of notes, and I really, this is one of my favorite topics to discuss, is uh, the future of this industry and the younger generation. How are we leaving it for them? How are they coming in and giving it to us? And, like, what's happening? What, is, it, is it getting better or is it getting worse? I would say, like, we're all fairly young. We're all in our mid-30s, mid early 30s. There's not a lot of peer contractors that I actually none that I talk to or like get mentorship from or anything really? like that. I don't have any that are really? open to like sharing or helping like that. Myself. Everybody's keeping their cards close. I, I like I've met older contractors. I work for older contractors, but no one like now is an independent contractor. I don't have someone that like I can talk to and mentor like John and I will talk a fair bit. I have some other friends that's around the same age, but, but I don't have, like an old that you know next generation teaching me anything so, so that's where youtube like where are you talking to? Uh, yeah i'll google i'll google or like talk to john or other guys that i know to try and get information but i'm just saying like that is 
you know, like I don't have a mentor like yourself or something that's, you know, to, to learn from, right? Like that has that many more years experience than I do to be like, Hey, you know, tips and tricks or, or anything to, to learn from. Is that big for you, Clark? Are you wanting to, I mean, you said at the beginning that you had a great employer before. Yeah. Like I'm quite fortunate because like my father's a carpenter. My grandfather was a carpenter. I got uncles, cousins that build homes. Like I, I grew up in the industry per se. And uh, like I have John as well, like him and I talk all the time, stuff like that. And I, uh, I was fortunate to work through a couple other guys that taught me a lot of things, but I, uh, I'm a little bit of a researcher. So I'll get like, hey, we're going to do a Maybach siding on this house. And I'll go home and I'll look on the Maybach site on how to install it properly, how to do certain things. I'll go and I'll watch different things on how to like trim it out differently, how to waterproof it differently, that kind of stuff. So then I come to work and I find the best possible result of the situation I'm in and then go from there. But I'm always open to different things and different opinions for other people, right? So, But there's two schools of thought, and you guys would probably correct me if I'm wrong, is like seeing it online or reading about it is a night and day difference than... Hands-on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where the kids, I think, are not getting it, right? It's a little harder to take what you've read or seen and put it into reality. Yeah, like I won't lie. Like I'll Google things if I don't know and kind of have to do self-taught where I'd rather have kind of a mentor on site that's like, oh, no, this is how you do it. I've done it this way, or I know how to do this. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. All the older guys, I think, are maybe fed up and they want out, and they don't want to have the time. I mean, I would love to set up a round table and have a bunch of old guys here with their IV and everything <laughs> like that and just picking their Jim. brain. And like, well, he's not there yet, <laughs> but but I, you know what I mean? It's like literally we can do a live streaming event or something and have all you guys you know, call in or whatever, talk to them and just pick their brain. At that, because the, the older guys that I've met, they want to share. They do. Oh, I need some up and bury. I've been very fortunate enough. Uh, that, again, I'm 37. I've been in cons- the construction industry for is that 19, 19 years now. So I started selling building materials, drywall, drywall related uh, products, shingles in a specialized store. Um, from there, after four years, Got with one of my clients or customers and started learning how to do drywall. So install, taping, that kind of stuff, residential stuff, um, you know, from there into the you know, commercial union, et cetera. Over that course of time, I've met many older trades, whether it be in line with what I was doing or currently do now, or other guys, mechanical guys, roofers, you know, um, electricians, what have you. So I still have some of those connections. Some of those connections are my current trades now yeah. um, to where, yeah, I'm fortunate enough that I can ask, may not be, you know, job specific questions to what I do now. Um, granted, they've probably run into very similar things on other sites they've been on. But at least from a business standpoint, I'm able to get, you know, years of experience from from guys still where you know, these guys are fortunate enough that I've made many mistakes in the past nine <laughs> years of business <laughs> and they can ask me, you know, what not to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But as far as I think, you know, GCs or, you know, guys kind of, again, more in line with what we do. I'd agree. There's not a lot of guys that. Oh you know yeah. Jason, you bring up a very good point. Eh? When I look back on it, there's probably buzz one or two, one or two slightly older guys, maybe about 10 or 15 years older than myself. That you could talk to. That I could talk to. But yeah. the majority was my age group or much younger. Yeah. Half my age at I that mean, point. Look at who you have on the show. I know. Right? I know. Again, I hate to you know go back to Phil, not, but wasn't he 30, 34? 34. Yeah. So, I mean, and he's doing big things. Yeah. Right? So, you, you know, whether it may be that guy's older older generations are not on social media, maybe don't know about this, maybe they're not listening to podcasts, but I think it's more or less that there's just not a lot of those guys kicking around anymore. They're they're not, and I've been been doing a lot of inquiries. Like I reached out to crane op guys, uh, guys that are retired, and and they're just like, uh, first, what's a podcast? Second, you know, like, they don't care. why? Uh, I don't understand it, right? So it's just like they don't, until you actually, I guess it's kind of like meeting that older trade on site, maybe in their last year. And 
they see who you are, your mindset, you're, you know what I mean? So if you've got that go get mindset, you're hungry, you want to learn, then they might respect you more. But if you're just over the phone or over an email and you're just talking about it, they don't grasp it. They don't get it. So then we're yeah. left to who's on our site right now, which is our age or slightly younger. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'd say like in our area, like we have a good pool of guys that are our age and, and we all talk to each other. Like we're open to that, but I don't, yeah, I don't like I've tried to make a few phone calls, not recently, but over the last couple of years to, to talk to older guys and they, they won't give you the time of day. What do they do? I don't want my ducks clean. Fuck off. Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> or they, I don't know. Like they think you're trying to steal I don't know. You know what? It's a good point that you bring that up because I don't know. Jared, Jared listens and he's out in Winnipeg and, and he called me late last night and I saw it and I was like, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep, right? Because it's just like, I love Jared. He's amazing. But it's like, it's, it's an hour long conversation at that point, right? So I try to get him back twice today and I couldn't. But he was telling me he had a funny, fishy phone call where he, he, some homeowner called him and asked him to text an image of his license. He's a, he's a master electrician. Exactly, exactly. So why would you be at, I want to make sure that you're legit. Can you please text me an image of your license? Well, when I come to your house and I'll scope out the work and I'll present it to you and then you hire me, then I'll show you my license, right? But it was just fishy and fishy and fishy. And ultimately he just said that this guy just wants a copy of my license, man. Yeah, there's a new electrician at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a little scary, right? Yeah. At that yeah. point. That's, that's kind of odd. So I, where are you guys like, so where can we get our information from then? Or how do we get information? I mean, again, the internet's a wonderful thing and it's a terrible thing all at the same time, because I mean, as much as you can find the right information, you can find misinformation. hundred percent. Right. So, you know, that's where you know, YouTube is, is a great tool. You know, you have to sort through the videos, but you can usually find a, a decent video on, on how to, yeah. Or for the information you're looking for. Um, you know, or you just got to reach out, you know, if for every, every nine people that might say, yeah, no, I don't want to help you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't have the time. You're going to find somebody that says the opposite and they're going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to tell you. They're going to explain. Knocking. Yeah. It's door knocking. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Speaking of which, there's a lot of guys now. Are you guys still doing that? For like, like, uh, just for, for work, just to kind of see, you don't need to No, the words that you get referral. Know. Yeah. All referral. Huh? Yeah. You're not nervous about next year? Not yet. No? no. I mean, you know, I, I'm booked till midsummer next year. Really? Yeah. Good for you. We, we do enough. I mean, we do a lot of commercial work. We do residential work. Um, I don't want to say that work could dry up. I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are. You, can, can. you, can, mm -hmm. you can not be working. Um, but yeah, we've been very fortunate that even if a job cancels, there's usually something else kind of waiting on the benches to yeah. come forward. Um, or at times, I yeah, sure, I've, I've, I've reached out to other contractors, you know, buddies of mine, say, hey, you know, can you use a couple guys coming up here next week when I know that maybe we're going to be a little bit slow? But at least over the past two years, and I mean, this is the most, the most guys I've had leading into the pandemic, you know, 2019, I had, I think there's four of us. And again, now there's eight. And... There's, there's no, of course. no shortage. Yeah. Right. So is it, is it good to be cautious? Absolutely. Uh, is it good to plan ahead? You know, again, Phil, lots of great stuff. And it's that. a smart move, yep. like not to have a final payment and have that final payment as you're finalizing the work on the last stage. Yeah. So, and you know, again, with, with kind of what I think you're trying to do with, with Clark Framing, you know what, you're, you're at the beginning of the job. Yeah. Everyone's excited. Lots of money. You know, should, mm -hmm. should be lots of money there. Right. So <laughs> even if, even if something may be dragged on a little bit, you know, with the case, your, your buddy there, yep. you'll still probably get paid. Even if, again, even if they drag it out, when you're a GC, you're at the end of the job, you know, the last swipes of paint are going on. Pillows are getting fluffed. I had whatever. an issue with this. I had an issue with yeah, that. Yeah. And Wonder if we can negotiate this. And no issues that. up until that point. I know. Everything's beautiful. But then my wife's friend's sister dog came by and saw a little scratch there. And we're just wondering if you can get a discount. Yeah. Well, I'll shoot the dog. What's going on here? Like, I, yeah. like, <laughs> what, what's cheaper? <laughs> yeah. No, but that's okay. So um, tool brands. You're DeWalt, no? 
Makita. Oh, you're Makita. Yeah. Makita at heart, but... Uh, Why? What did Makita do to you? Swipe right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a lowly day when, when Milwaukee had a cordless miter saw. And, uh, you know, I... I oh, so you start I switching. broke, and I bought it, and How then... How much red now? Half? It's a sea of color. It's like a rainbow of color at the shop. You gotta be. I'm uh, a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, but I use a lot of air tools, so I got a lot of pass loads and stuff like that. Oh, that is so good to hear, man, from a young guy. Yeah. So, so I got so like... Battery crap, man. I think I got like six pass load air nailers. I will not give up a crown stapler. They won't make a cordless one. I guarantee you that one because it'll never be fast enough. No. I've got a Makita crown. I love it. Like an actual sheeting crown stapler yeah. for like two inch yeah. N16s? Yeah. Really? I love it. Uh, Four I'm mils. It. I love it. No. Nope. But I love my air. I, yeah. I don't care about air hoses everywhere. I yeah. love air. I don't give a the shit. Best, the best cordless tool I've ever bought is I got a couple of those Makita rear handles. Okay. So those, I love them because I was using skill worm drives forever. And there's nothing more of a pain in the ass than carrying a cord up through trusses if you got to cut something. But the something battery skill. Like, so you got a lot of framers that... Yeah, and like the Some Makita big battery too, man. Yeah, the Makita ones went on sale where it was a point where like here's a saw and here's four batteries <laughs> for the price of the saw, and I was like, okay, and I bought two of them. Okay, and until you get yeah. on a job site and all of a sudden all the batteries are stolen from your. Well, then I just pull out the couple corded tools in the trailer. Yeah, go old school. Keep, huh? I keep them. Then it's I won't use the Makita ones in the rain because I'm I'm afraid of the batteries getting killed and everything else in them, right? In the rain. Yeah, like if it's if it's raining really? outside and a guy sets a saw down sideways in the rain and all that water goes in the motor, like I'm just subconsciously thinking, all right, here we go. But that skill I've left outside in my truck in a snowstorm and it works the next day. Is there a way to get a Makita sponsored test? Oh, I've tried. Makita is <laughs> the worst out of the bunch if you guys think about it. They Trust are. me, Makita refuses to play that game and I have a little respect for that because of that. Um, uh, the yellow and red and... Well, it's rigid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> rigid Orange. will like build a whole house for you, man. They'll give it a, even a Ryobi. Yeah. No, we've got a <laughs> uh, a wicked tool repair store up in Barrie. Oh yeah, what's the name? Uh, it's Tony's Tool and Vacuum. I don't know if they still well, they still do the odd vacuum. I think you see them in there. But um, Dwayne, awesome guy, took over the uh, the, the store probably ten can fix anything 10, fifteen years ago. They do. They really take on probably almost any tool the best tool they say to work on is dewalt why they're the best to deal with to get parts yep to get parts it's quick they pay well to to fix the tools yeah yeah uh milwaukee is second they don't even touch makita why it's just a pain just can't even can't even deal with them it's japanese because they're so well built (laughs) <laughs> Your Makita's not failing. Nothing's failing. Everything's perfect. Uh, a couple of impacts, drills over time. Just yeah. burning them out. Other yeah. than that, everything's been solid. My, I've my, had all my Makita stuff for years. My first Sawzall, which, I mean, the thing had to be 15 years old. Wait, a Makita Sawzall? Yeah. Okay, all the right. First, the first, com- <laughs> first four-piece <laughs> combo we, can kit. Can we correct John here for a second? Your first Makita Reciprocating saw. Sawzall. I just want to say something. Okay, <laughs> hang on. Let me get that box of Kleenex. <laughs> You know, no, no, no. I'm just saying. I still have a Sony Disman. You know what I mean? <laughs> the other young guys listening won't even know what I was just talking about no. right now. Yeah, no. You got the anti-skip version or <laughs> <laughs> the jogging, the it jogging is. version with the headset. It's yeah. got the little tube thing on it, yeah. and you can advance it and shit like that. Yeah, yeah but does it have bass boost? Yes, it does. Oh, yeah, dude, Sony? this was top yeah. of the line Sony. Top yeah. of the line Sony. I couldn't throw it out. I couldn't throw it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. So we're back to Makita's reciprocating saw. Yes, my apologies, <laughs> Makita, if you're listening. Um, yeah, it just it literally burnt out probably three months ago. Okay, and it's still it's at the shop. I haven't thrown it out yet. I'm not okay. going to pay to fix it because it's not worth fixing. But I'll probably hang it up as a little, little nod to to where I started. That's cool. nice. That and I just have trouble throwing shit in. Oh, get, get three or more and make a, make a table out of it or something. Make a coffee table out of it if you get three more, though. That'd be a cool idea. Jason, you got one? I bought, you guys are going to laugh at me, I bought a limited edition stiletto hammer, the orange one. This was a couple mm-hmm. years ago. They came out, and I was going to put it in a frame. Not use it? 
No, it's still in the box, everything at home. I was going to put it in my office. What's it like being independent, independently wealthy? Yeah, I mean... Uh, Are you just waiting to learn? What was that hammer? Yeah, I got to learn how to use it. 300? So. 300? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, but it came with a hoodie, so I thought it was cool. <laughs> like, I thought I was going to put the hoodie up and the hammer in it the It came with a hoodie? What, yeah. to protect it? Oh, like to wear, whatever. Anyways, I had to give it away. It was way too big for me. So, <laughs> funny, funny enough, my guys, because I bought the just a generic stiletto wood handle. That's what I have. Yeah, they're awesome. I love it. My, my guys joke that they're going to build a shadow box. For my hammer to they hang should. it up. They should. Because I don't use it. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure yours hasn't even gone smooth yet from hitting no, nails. Oh, mine's yeah. all kinds of nicks and everything. I use mine. I don't care. I prefer the wood handle. What are you swinging, Clark? I swing a stiletto titanium, but I had a stiletto wood handle forever. And broke? then uh, it broke. Yeah, I, I broke several times. It's just going to happen. And uh, I don't know. I got a deal. They went on sale. I bought mine six, eight years ago now. Still good. I've bent it, bent it back. And uh, I can't get by the side nail puller. I love the thing. For that, it works great. Um, the kid that works for me, he put in his first three months, so I bought him a stiletto wood handle just as a gift. I could not see him swing that off-brand hammer any longer and struggle. So <laughs> Off-brand? Yeah. What I can't. I, I, can I say brands? He, he, had, he, had he had an IHL hammer. And okay. you could certainly, you could grab it and bend it. Like he would pry a nail and bend it and then bend it back. Keep going with his day. <laughs> Good for him. And it was like the fat, I, I buy a lot of like nails from Fast Tech. So IHL is making a bunch of products on top of other people's products. And I'm wondering whose hammer is that really? Who knows? He's got lots of clothes though. Yeah. Yeah. They're hard to be for the clothes. Yeah. The yeah. clothing's dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. I am wearing IHL pants right now. Yeah. So am I. 30 bucks. That's they're it. Probably a year old. But remember, he's not on the tools. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, no, they're great for office work. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no wear anywhere, right? No, none at all. That's all. <laughs> just in the back. <laughs> Maybe wow. the wheels get caught on the cuff a few times or something? Yeah, like I had to hem them up just so that way. <laughs> <laughs> the office chair wheels, man. Uh, OBC, guys, what do you guys want to talk about here? Nothing. What is the, uh, the strongest shape? Triangle. Sphere? I feel like... Not a triangle. Oval. You're close. Ellipsy. Circle. I said sphere. That's close. Oh, sorry, sphere. Yeah, you said sphere. Okay. That's why I started going close. for weird. Triangle close. has three corners. Support its load. Square has four. Hexagon has six, and octagon has eight. As we all know, in contrast, a circle can be viewed as having 360 corners. Yeah, that's why a circle. Uh, lintels, arches. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. What? Do you guys know what the bearing is for a steel lintel over masonry? The minimum mm -hmm. bearing. Three inches? I was yeah. going to say three yeah. inches either side. Yeah, three inches. <laughs> it can also be inch and a half concrete and inch and a half two by six. If you leg a two by six to the concrete. <laughs> that's still three inches of yeah. bearing. It's just not all, all concrete. No, but that's still bearing. Yeah. Right, it's still fine. Yeah. It should be. We're not engineers, but that should be fine. Nope. They said it was okay. Uh, <laughs> not less than 150 millimeters. That's the length of the bearing, right? What's 150? I don't millimeters? know. It's six inches, isn't it? 150 millimeters? Somebody figure that out. I, I don't know. know. I'm no, not metric. It's like 25 mil in an inch or something like that. Is it? Yeah. Three. So I think 305 is a foot. So steel lens is described in sentence two and three shall have even and level bearing and shall have not less than 150 length of bearing at the end supports is 150 mil six inches no. working on it can't be six inches well that would make 5.9 inches wow, oh that would make inches. sense that would make sense because it's three on each side yeah you take a steel beam put it in concrete you got three on each side six in total that's not how i'm reading it here is that how you guys are reading it says have even and level bearing and shall not have less than 150 I get at the even, end supports. even bearing, I guess. So I guess that actually makes yeah, sense. Yeah, because like it's you'll a get a total of 150 milliliters. Yeah. Milliliters, millimeters. So then it's three inches on either side. So we were correct. I hope so. For all those listening. <laughs> we haven't built anything in the Do your while. research. Yeah. <laughs> Don't trust us. Uh, how do you guys deal with, I mean, we've all had bad clients. How do you guys deal with it? How do you do, uh, you see the red flag, right? You must see the red flag, right? So how is how is the best way? And I and I love that you started the show, Jason. Honestly, with communication. 
I was gonna. I was just gonna say you got to be clear and decisive, and you have to have that awkward conversation. Just have it, and and sometimes it doesn't go well. Sometimes you have to just you have to. But don't you feel like you're the bad guy, and you have to take the higher road, and you have to eat more than they eat? Don't you feel that as a tradesperson? Yeah, I had a job a couple years ago, and they changed some stuff on me. It was a bathroom reno, and they they bunch of change orders on me, and then I you know. The one bathroom price. and a bunch of change? Yeah, like a shower. We were doing a custom shower, and they changed a ton of stuff, added a bunch of stuff. And um, so the price had to reflect that. And I was open about it, and then they said, no, we're not we're not paying it. I said, well, like, this is the price. You added all this stuff, da-da-da. So I, I, I walked, I had to walk away from it. Like, I just said, no, that's not that's not fair. And I, I ended up walking, not not finishing the job, unfortunately. It happens, man. Like it's sometimes like goes back to your stress. It goes back to your life. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it at that point. Right. I'm much different now, even though I still try to, you know, do the old handshake approach. I mean, you have to have paperwork to back up what you're doing. You have to have conversation, communication, records of communication. And it sucks because I just feel that we should be able to, you know, if someone asks you to do something, you say you're going to do it. That should be the the contract, but yeah, obviously we don't live in that world anymore. No. Um, I yeah, I'm much more vocal now with people. I used to be, you know, tail between the legs. Yes, absolutely, we'll take care of it. You know, not worry about if it costs extra money. And we're not talking thousands of dollars or anything like that. But like, I remember, you know, one of the first little side jobs I did, you know, leading me into what I'm doing now. Drywall in the basement for a guy. Did the whole basement. <laughs> Mechanical room, he wanted like a sheet and a half of drywall up. So I'm like, okay, it's two sheets of board. Go get the drywall, get it back here, put it up, mud it, tape it. I'm like, 300 bucks. He's like, okay. So we do it, we're done. Cuts me the check, look at it. I'm like, hey, you're 300 bucks short. He's like, no. I'm like, yeah, well, we had agreed that the the extra drywall was going to be 300 bucks. He's like, verbally agreed. Yeah. He's like, should have had a contract. He said that? Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, nice guy. So, you know, that just... Should have ducked. It just... <laughs> you, take, you take the drywall back? <laughs> uh, it, you know, it, and that, that's, the, that's the whole thing about doing what we do. Like, the moment you, you install, the moment you bring it on site... We're just all too happy to just do it. Yeah. To please the customer. You know, because, again, going back to Phil, you know, if, if there's no trust in the beginning... Why is there going to be trust in the end? There won't be. It's going to get worse. There's ways to to lose trust. Obviously, even the most trusting person, you can have a, you can have a great relationship in the beginning, but you could obviously do something one side or the other that could tarnish that. But truthfully, if you're going into that relationship, you should have trust in the beginning, and it should last through the job. Even if something happens, you should be able to communicate and have that conversation, no matter how tough it might be and sort it out yeah. whether it be that maybe that you guys part ways and figure out what's owed up until that point and be fair both sides but we just we don't i don't think live in that day and age right now i think most trades people are afraid to have that i think they're afraid to either put their customer in that environment or don't want to be perceived as the bad guy so they won't they won't do it and they just hope that it just kind of solves itself but it doesn't. In construction, it doesn't. You're going to be losing out then. That's just, you have to learn how to just have that conversation. And you know, the hard part is too, now we live in this technology age where, you know, that goes south and then they get on Google and give you a bad review. Mm-hmm. I had a, I, slam you. And, and I've got major problems with all that stuff because the thing is, it's just too easy. I mean, as we could easy clearly see with the Arrive Can app, how it had more positive comments and feedback about it than products that belong to like Apple. And I'm like, okay, so obviously this is not truthful. This was bought and paid for. So it's no different than with Google. Someone could just be irate and just fucking talking shit at that point, right? And yep. then you're, you're really, I had someone reach out to me and said, I really wish that homeowners would be, uh, would take a course before they did a construction. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about that terminology expectations timelines yeah Yeah. like i mean and and it's just because i think that they're getting the wrong school right so i mean i think that pinterest and social media and house and 
TV and the four letter word and all that shit is not the right school. And it's just, it's funny that they'll listen to their entire circle of friends. So everybody that's not in construction and they'll question the professional who's in construction. I have a problem with that. I'm sorry to say, but I do have a problem with that. I, I think we need a platform like, you know, Google Review or or House or or any of those that us contractors can go in and like Uber. Listen, like back, back put, to put the clients <laughs> info. And, and in I won't there. I won't say the name of someone reached out to me and asked me like Here's an idea, Manny, right? And it's exactly that. So a better business bureau for contractors, mm -hmm. watching out our back, right? You review your client. Yeah, so all of a sudden, if a client screwed you over, if a client refuses to uh, pay at a certain, or whatever, you can go on there and go, so-and-so is not allowed. Like, this is what happened at this job and all of a sudden. And I go, you do that? The moment you do that, they'll get all over Google and they'll get all over Homestars and they'll, 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 their mandate would be to destroy you at that point. Well, I mean... Todd Todd P wrote or J Johnson. I, anyways, don't put you like maybe you don't have your info in there. Yeah, but you gotta you know? paint the picture of the house, right? <laughs> so the house is this on this True. street. Not that number, but the guy looks like this and the girl looks like like it's just either way, it's just it's gonna get pointed at the clients and then they're gonna go, wait a minute, he's the only contractor that's been here, so then they're gonna go like, uh, like I recently I, I went, did a consultation with a client, new client, met, everything went well. Um, they had a, a certain budget. I came in over that budget and uh, I gave it to them and crickets, didn't hear from, the, from them at all. And the next thing I know, there's a, a bad Google review, like slamming me. And I was like, I didn't even do any work at your house. I've been hearing about this. I man. was so upset and... Uh, I was like, I didn't even do any work for you. I just came and get like, why, why you, you shouldn't even give, give me a Google review at all. And uh, so I was on it trying to defend myself. And my wife, God bless her soul, was just like, no, you just, you got to take the high road. And, and, and at that point you can't, I go to, you know, you go to Google and you're like, Hey, this is not, I didn't even work for this client. I did a consultation, but that's it. And then now, you know, now I got this one star and you're like, well, what the heck? Like, I didn't even do any work for you. We, we didn't do any, there was no nothing, but now I, I just got to eat it. And that's where like, I think that's the frustrating part. And, and absolutely would be. And that's where I think, you know, where you're saying like, well, then they're going to go out of their way to give you that review. Chances are they're giving you that review anyway. Regardless. Mm -hmm. I, I agree so at you. least if you could warn others, you know, again, but thankfully again, like, so we all talk with him, Barry, you know, there's, there's probably 10 to 15 of us. A handful that, yeah, no, we know each other. So, you yeah. Know, yeah. So yeah, we, we, Thankfully, you know, we can kind of vet things at times. Hey, have you heard of this person, this trade, you know, whatever it may be. Sometimes you, you find out the info that you, you assume or, or sometimes you find out stuff that you didn't even know, you know. Um, but at least there's that, that possibility of doing that. Hopefully down here, guys can do the same. It's worse. It's, That's unfortunate. It's terribly worse. Like, it's just you guys are at an advantage at that point. It's good that you guys can do that. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that you have to do that, right, to either clients or other trades that you want to work with. But it's, it's kind of scary that that's where it's headed. And it might even get worse because I guess you're going to get a lot of fly-by-night guys that are going to continue to come into this industry, right? We saw that in the uh, 89 recession. We saw that in the 08 recession. Like, you know, people left other industries and got in. So question for you then, Manny, since you've been doing this longer than us. Do you vet your clients? Yeah. Well, do, like, how do you? But I, I've also said, you just check them out. You, you yeah. try to figure out. I don't get to the point of policing or, or trying to figure out. But I have met someone recently that mm -hmm. is connected and they can do a, a further search. And there's other ways online that you can actually do some more extensive searches about mm -hmm. these people. But I've always said your best client could always become your worst client. They well, can yeah, turn on you. Yep. And the thing is that, like, you're blamed for being such a good contractor and salesperson because we do it all the time and we have all these ideas. So we know what's possible. And then we'll like, okay, we'll, we'll share. Well, you know, we are thinking maybe you guys should consider this. And then they'll be like, oh, it's lovely. I'd be perfect. She will love it. He will love it. Kids will love it. And all of a sudden they ran out of money. And then they blame you because you came up with all these ideas that somehow convinced them to spend the money on it. So how is that? 
we're the bad guy. It's not my house. It's your house. You're enjoying it. Mm-hmm. You're going to sell it. You're going to make money from it. I'm still yep. making, it's a business. I'm still mm-hmm. making money from it. Right. For you, Jason, on that one star person, me, I would go to like party packages or something like that. <laughs> Get one of those big balloons. You know, those huge balloons, those big yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Fill it up with a bunch of fucking stars and then pop it in <laughs> front of their house on the front lawn there, man. <laughs> That's just me. That's I what wish, I would do. I wish I... That's <laughs> an actually an awesome idea. <laughs> you haven't put any thought into that at all, have you? No. no. As soon as he said star, I already Shit. thought of that idea. <laughs> so fast But, but what goes. do you do, right? You can't... You can't no, you, you can't, can't What are you going to do? Add really? fuel to the fire? Like, okay, you you're an away. asshole, you're an asshole, you're an asshole. Yep. But you can't fight clients when it comes to those. Those platforms are designed for clients. Yeah, your hands are your hands are bound behind your back. You can't... You just have to go, hey, you know what? I'm so happy that you... Uh, that you found someone, you know, great, great on you. I'm, yeah, I hope it, hope wonderful. your project went well. Yeah. Like, you I, found doesn't. somebody that fits your 100%. Budget. But fits your personality. That too. You know, right. a- apples and oranges, right? Like, just, you dodged a bullet on that one. If they're willing to do that, 100%. Imagine, just imagine. But it's just, yeah, it's just funny how people feel like they, I, you know, they've been wronged somehow. Right? Like you did them a dis. Are they upset because you didn't finish their job or you didn't want to do their job or too expensive for them? So they found somebody else. I know, but where's that number coming from? Where are they, where's the apples and oranges here? I don't, I don't, I don't that's where I, I go back to, and someone suggested this to me. I didn't come up with this. They said there should be a school for clients. Mm-hmm. No different if you lose your demerit points, and, and yep. I've done this, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lost your de- all no, your demerit well, points. No, 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 not recently, dude. I'm a, I'm a kid. Like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like a pristine, well, good. I'm a good driver now, right? But in my <laughs> younger years, I, I did get as low as to the point where you've got to go to that class, right? And it's just like this is stupid, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely <laughs> stupid. So you got no demerit points, and you have to do this. It takes like six, eight hours, eh? And you're watching films from the 70s. You know what I mean? Car crashes and blood on the screen and all this other crap. <laughs> They're trying to scare you. And I'm like, this is like ridiculous. Slow down, slow down. So everybody in there is for speeding, right? So it's just, I think that clients should be in a class for construction, right? So right off the bat, HDTV, big circle and a line right through it. You know what I mean? Pinterest, right through it. Like, it's just like over and over. And, and, and listen to the pros. Like, you have a professional there. See their credentials, see their business, see their website, see how they present themselves, see, see their team, their crew, see the work that they've done. Go look at or speak to other clients of theirs. We all have great clients yeah. that speak highly of us. Yeah. So I'm like, why aren't you taking that information first, right? Instead of the other information from a bunch of people that are not like professionals. Yeah. I offer every client the possibility to talk to previous clients, good and, good and bad. Yeah. You hear, here's, you know, here's a few people that'll tell you to run, not hire me. And then here's as many people as you want. Why do you, why do you offer the negatives? I just, I, I think you should have both sides. It's a good point. It's a very you know good what? point. I, like I, that. I think you should, because I, you know, again, like it's super easy to have, you know, the, the to just go in and, and basically say like, yes, we're the best. We're perfect. We're perfect. We're not. Look, look at this photo yeah. of this job that we did. It's amazing. Versus being able to speak to somebody, hear their experience, whether it be good or bad. No one ever ends up taking any information. Like I, I've, I've had a few new clients talk to old clients, but on average, people just go, okay, like that, that's fair. I think it's just the option, the ability for them to do potentially do you think they're respectful it. of you offering it? I hope so. You know, I some see that. some might go oh, whatever. You know, probably like a, a fake number for the bad. You know, the bad review or something. But <laughs> no, um, I don't need my ducks clean. Right? Yeah, all of a sudden that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> click. Um, but no, I just I, I just think it's it's fair. You know, and I and I'm willing to like I, and I will have the conversation with them about the clients that have the bad experience, and I'll give my side and let them decide. You know, based on the good clients whether I'm speaking the truth about my experience of the bad one or whether that client is speaking the truth. I like that. I actually like that. That's the first time I've ever heard yeah. anything like that, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I like it a lot because then it, 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 you're vulnerable now. You're like, yeah. here, we're starting from here. Yeah. This is where we're starting from. I, I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. And this is, I want to work for you. You guys want to hire me. 
and then go from there. I do like that. You know, we did, a, we did the, the house clerks frame for us. We did the, the ICF and, uh, you know, we made a mistake. We had a blowout. Ouch. We caught it quick. We fixed it. But that became a post, you know, as much as I'm happy to go, Hey, look at this, you know, this awesome ICF foundation, Perfect. hashtag, hashtag amazing. I did a post that said, look, we, we screwed up. This is why. And this is what we now know not to do next time, yeah. you know, and, and someone comments like, well, why would you, you know, off- offside, but why, why would you post about that? Why not? Why not be educational? Why not be a little vulnerable? Not everything's perfect. It's never going to be perfect. You know, own up. Man that's, up. that's hard in the world we live in too, right? Where everyone, you post a picture, especially on Instagram. Like we all use Instagram. I use it a lot. And it's easy to do that, right? Hey, check it out. Look at, look what we're doing. But it's cool to do that, right? Be like, mm-hmm. hey, we messed up or are, we failed in a little area and we learned from it. This is what not to do or whatever, right? And then someone else can learn. Like, that's cool. And I think I think we need more of that. You know, like Instagram's great. I, you know, I've, I met these guys through Instagram. I met you yeah. through Instagram. Yeah. It's a, an amazing tool for, I, I don't want to say younger generations, all generations, if you're willing to use it. And you have to understand what it is and, and take it for what it is. A lot of it is fluff. Not that it's, you know, bad work, but again, it's a, it's a photo, maybe a video, but you're, you're seeing a, a snippet of time, at the right angle, the right lighting, the right wordage. The right filter. You know, and... But it has to come down to the right contractor too, right? Because yeah. there's a lot of guys out there that are only going to show the fluff where there's not as many guys that are like, oh, hey, I'm going to show you my mistake. But who, who do you guys want to speak to? You want to speak to a contractor who's going to show you both sides? Or are you going to speak to a contractor that's showing everything that's perfect? I want to see both sides because I want to see when you did it wrong and what you do to, re- like, to fix it. Because Listen. if it's like, hey, I don't do anything wrong, I only do good stuff, oh, but bullshit. some guy yeah, does something you know. absolutely terrible and he's like, well, it is what it is and walks away. Or the guy goes, Listen, I fucked this up, but here's what I did to fix it. Okay, and then it. you're like, Okay, so you made a mistake, you owned your mistake, you fixed it, and you continue with the job. So therefore, you didn't leave that customer hanging. Right? So you got to wonder about, like, we go back to the older guys, how many times they fucked up? Because, I mean, even working with my dad, when I did work with my dad, he made a few mistakes, but he also made some really good moves, and I learned from that. But I would chuckle about the mistakes that he made, and then we would talk about it. So you got to wonder, and it's no different than Jordan, like how many times did Jordan miss a game-winning ball? Yeah, yeah. But, but people only remember that. They don't, you know what I mean? So it's like contractors make mistakes, but yeah. we all said in this industry, it's how you handle that. And it's, it's harder now, you know, because, I mean, Again, go back to the house that uh, we're doing. There's cameras up. And they're not, you know, as much as we have a time lapse kicking around or, you know, get the drone out or take, you know, our, our pictures on our phones. The clients have multiple cameras, both for security, but for checking in on the job. Yeah. You know, so to me, it's better to own up, keep that trust, have that conversation, no matter how tough it is, when a mistake happens. Because if you try to sweep it under the rug these days, you don't know who's watching. You know, anybody could be watching. You know? Plus, it's a reflection of your character. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say morally too, right? Yeah, that's what it is. If you're concerned yeah. when you step on site that there's cameras watching you, then you have an issue. Because you shouldn't be concerned about being watched. Like, you're there to do a job and you're, you, you should honestly you're be You're okay with that? Yeah. I understand the cameras for security purposes. I get it. But during work hours when we're there... That's just the clients wanting to look at the cameras to make sure that everybody's working and nobody's screwing around. The, right. But but if but that's if you're giving them a, a price like the, this is the price to do the job and you want to have coffee ten times a day or smoke breaks, you do whatever you want to do. You mean I've hired you. You're, as long as you're doing the work and I'm happy, then you do what you got to do, right? Like unless they're trying to like micromanage you and go, hey, I saw you were taking a lot of breaks or your guys are doing nothing, or then I'd be like, cool. That, not, you know, we I gave you, a, you know, this is the price. Not saying my guys do that, but. No, but I think that's where upfront communication, you know, stating what you're there, like you said, to do, what the price is, maybe the duration of this task, maybe a small conversation about whether you're working outside, if weather could play into that, mm-hmm. that, that time frame. And if you do all that, I feel they should have a, a good sense of, you know, you're going to complete a job 
and that there's, you know, everything's labeled out. And if not, you have to have a talk about boundaries. Yeah. And yeah. you have to be able to have that conversation no matter how difficult it may be because usually clients aren't going to want to hear no and stop. So you have to be able to articulate that to them in efforts of letting them, you know, they want to watch on camera, you bang in, you know, hanger nails <laughs> or what have you. Um, you know, if you're painting a wall and they want to watch, watch that paint dry, you know, go nuts, but don't talk to me about the process. And that leads into, you know, your idea of clients should go to school and they should have an understanding of what the process is to a degree before they start to try to, you know, be the forefront of, of, you know, of how to do your job that, done. yeah, that yeah. they hired you for. So Clark, you're fine with cameras on site. Would you be fine if the client was standing right there when you were framing? No, safety. They're not trained to do my job. They're, if wearing, I'm, they're wearing a hard hat. They have safety boots on. Yeah, no, you're not my employee. You're not. I'm not covering you. If something happens, if I do something, if I drop my hammer from the roof and you're standing down there watching and I clip you in the head, I get sued. No, even though it's your own property, I that's know, no, I it's know. not for me. I know. No, I don't. And you know what? I've had customers that will drive by sites that every day. I've had homeowners where I've worked on houses where they stay in a separate building on the property, like a bunkie or something while we're renovating their home in the previous. And I've never had an issue. Like I've, I'll, we show up to site every day. We're there on time. We put in a full day's work. We don't leave for two hour lunch breaks and go to the bar. Like it's, we're not those guys. You, hey, you should see some there's of those that guys. Goes on. Really? There's those guys. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> two hour lunches, go to the bar. So I've, I've built some stuff in some <laughs> subdivisions and stuff, and you'll see guys all of a sudden leave, and then they'll come back. Oh, yeah. I love how Phil actually off, off mic, he said something where he was trying to hire somebody, and um, he was trying to call him, text him, just communicate with him. And then he said, and he was non-responsive. And I said, that's actually the perfect word, eh, for a trade that doesn't want to get back to you non-responsive and i was like i was picturing this cadaver like it's just like <laughs> he's gone there. and he's just gone and i thought oh, i'm gonna start using that word probably he's non-responsive at that point <laughs> and that's the worst i mean that, that just comes back to again the, the the idea of communication and conversation doesn't matter how difficult it may be just have it because at the end of it you'll both be better off. you might as well rip the band-aid off yeah. yep. that's all it is and yep. then they might even appreciate it who you are as an individual right like this is who he is most of the time i think yeah i, yeah. I you know they'll it, respect it yeah you'll have the odd one that's not it's not gonna you know weigh on them in a, in a positive way they're gonna look at it negatively you're the bad guy you're maybe saying no not doing something you know giving a, a price that they deem because they researched somewhere i strongly believe that 95 percent of where they got their budget and their pricing model was what the bank or their funds allowed yeah it's not mm -hmm. what it actually costs and that's that's a concern of mine at that point because it's never in line it's never in line right and everybody always has a huge dream i want this this is our forever home this is our forever kitchen this is our forever everything well, it's going to be your forever budget too, right? Yeah. yeah. It's all part of it. 100%. That's perfect. Scale back the rental, work on what you can afford right now, and then do it in, in stages. I've had in that a, conversation a number of times. In the course of forever, you can continue the renovation of other areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's bottom line. Clark, the future of framers. Mm. Am I fair to say that you get all these young guys who see all the cool videos out there, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, fully decked out with the latest gear and the best hammer the best saw the best diamondback belt and the best jock strap best everything i don't give a shit like <laughs> are they amazing or what are they getting better or are they getting worse i'm finding people nowadays think that the if they buy better tools that makes them better thank you but they don't have the knowledge thank you because i'm in the same mind you guys feel the same way I used a miter box a couple weeks back <laughs> because you want to explain what that is to some of the listeners. I, I, I told you you should see him do trim. Actually, it turned out wow. really nice. I, I had to go <laughs> trim a kitchen window. And again, because I don't use a lot of the tools, the guys have the tools. We're on a few different sites. And my options were buy a new miter saw 
or there's a $25 Stanley miter box and saw combo. A combo? Yeah. Uh, and Fine that's, tooth, eh? That's what I went for. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go in front of my clients who were home, <laughs> set up. Thankfully, it was a very dust-free <laughs> trim installation. But I ended up having to cut that window trim with that miter box. Did you post that? I, I, I have photos of it. I'm going to get to it. I, I would love to see I, that I've online. got. I've got. Send, and ask everybody, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Sends I, me a picture. Look what I'm doing today. And I look it up. I'm like, I bet you're hand nail in that too much. And he sends me a little package of hand nails. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have. I didn't you have didn't have a nail set? Nothing. Nothing. Turn the nail around. That's Nothing. Something. Just hit it. <laughs> didn't even have a punch. Any rosebuds? Nothing. Nothing? Good for it was, you. Uh, he sent me a picture of it. It actually turned out good. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it, so. Like, really nice. Proper lighting. Distance, you know, other side of the distance. room. <laughs> Fil- yeah, <laughs> the miter box filter was on. Yeah, <laughs> I but I did have miter bond to go with my miter box. Okay, and uh, that's and a nice I, contrast of the ages. Yeah, and then I had uh, some good old Timbermate. So you know, it tweaked, ready for paint. Yeah, tweaked it up a little bit. It looked pretty good. But uh, were you proud when you finished? I was. Yeah, as you should have. Been. I'm going to put that miter box up beside my uh, Makita reciprocating <laughs> saw. At it's the another shop. leg of the table. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's about the same length. That's you can use it to hold your hammer. That's too funny, that's man. That's leg number three. I only need one more leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to navigate the new landscape of construction industry: higher material costs and longer wait times. Are we still dealing with that? I think things are getting relatively reasonable i wouldn't say normal but reasonable i feel like windows and doors are still crazy crazy wait times yeah i think engineered lumber garbage in what respect it's all over the place it keeps costing more and it just doesn't even out like i get rim joists that are like 12 and an eighth i get lvl that you can ask john i had a lift of 1 16 5 8 10 foot wall studs they ranged everywhere from almost 117 inches to 116 a quarter. Wow. I'd be framing a wall, or I'd go to nail like a like a, a California corner together. i go to nail together, and the studs are two different lengths. And I'm like, I fuck this up. Like, I go to the bottom of the lens. I'm like, no, those are perfectly flush. Go to the top, eighth inch different. Measure the studs, 116, seven eighths. What's going on? It. I think it's just a rush. You know, yeah. we, had, we had our lull. They're getting rid of their quality. Yeah. It, whether, whether it was a, you know... Maybe if they tried to pump a bunch of stuff out, you know, get some stock and the quality went out the window or whether they're just trying to maintain production right now and, you know, try finding an employee, try finding, you mm-hmm. know, you've got, you've got for higher signs at Tim Hortons and gas stations and everywhere you go, no one wants to work and it's hard to keep up quality if you're going to try to up production with a lack of people. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to get into the industry. The younger kids. I uh, I pulled two guys out of a carpentry program at Georgian College, and they're good. They're good for, I think, what that program gave them through a pandemic time. Okay. So there Everything was, was done virtually. A lot of virtual, um, a lot of you know there there was a small practical near the end, so it was it was tough for me trying to fit them into to areas. So it was a lot of kind of shadowing, you know clean up, move material, trying to get a better understanding of where they are. I've, you know, sent them down to Clark a few times. I think Jason. Yeah, I worked with yeah, you know, one, of, one of my boys. Yeah. Um, and there's moments where they'll surprise you in a good way. Are they potentially good? In time, yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's a different mindset. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing to overcome right now. Um, it's kind of scary that you guys are saying that because you guys are younger than me. Like, you're... You're talking about a d- different mindset for, a, a, what, a 17, 18 year period? Yeah, probably about from, 10 from years from younger than us. Yeah. Yeah, when well, you guys got into it, so your mindset would not have been this way. And I, and I mean, I, and, and that's why like, no, I, right? I, I don't think so. I'm sure I was a little shit when oh, I We're all cocky, started. but work wise, when you're passionate, I work mean, work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. Just show up and grind all day. You know, and that, that's the thing. Like, they show up. Um, and again, there's days. My, my one, one guy, Conrad, was with me today. You know, he looked at me like it's getting close to lunch. And I said, look at the crane operator. You see him stopping? He's like, nope. Like, there's your answer. We keep going. We 
he stops for food, we'll stop for food. You know, and that's just, it. that's a specific thing. You've got a crane for 300 bucks an hour. Clark and his guy up on a roof. Yeah. You know, I, truss I, is swinging. Yeah. He, he got told, get a water bottle, put it in your pouch. You get up, you don't get down. You'll get down when we stop. So no. I'm sorry, but. And then he's got his face just dropped. Like, it's yeah. just like. He's, you know. he's a big kid and he's in good shape and he likes to eat. So he was a little grumpy at that point in time. And that that's Clark's guy, Lucas. He's you a be- he's a beauty guy. Like he's I can't ask for a better kid that's just green as can be. I cannot. He's I lock out so hard with that kid. Yeah. Okay. Shows up to work every day, doesn't complain, gets a little grumpy when we work in the rain, but so does or anybody. Or if he doesn't eat on time. Yeah, or if he doesn't eat on time. And uh, but as long as he's Tell him to intermittent fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he shows up with a lunchbox, I kid you not, the size of a cooler and has like three dinners in it. Wow. And we'll just eat and how eat and bi- eat. How big is he? He's like six one. I think he's like two twenty now. But he goes to the gym every day. He's a big kid. Like he's not a small kid. No, he's tank. Yeah. At six one, two twenty. Wow, he's a tank. He's, he's a big kid. I had uh my first year of construction, I had this crazy idea that I was still trying to pedal to the government where I wanted to go into a subdivision and buy two homes exactly build or grade right and then i was going to leave one exactly the way it was done completely finished this is what they deliver and then go in and then rip out the other one and then build it properly to show that you can actually build homes better right and then you guys were just talking now and i just started thinking what if you did get twins and one was virtually brought into the industry and one was physically brought into the industry what do you guys think how would they look differently well, I got one kid that I, I've been training for four or five months now, and he's doing great, cuts on his own, nails on his own, does layout. He's a good kid. and He I didn't did, ask for saw horses to make his first cut? Nope. <laughs> he, he, did it right bet- box. he did it right between his feet and binded the crap out of that saw. Yeah, so, I know, but they teach you to get a saw horse. And he I'm, put a nail in his finger the first day on site. I literally put a nail gun in front of him. I said, listen, this is a nail gun. This is the size of the nail that comes out of it. You do not put your hand within... Like six inches of this nail gun. I love that tip. He man. grabs a t- <laughs> he grabs a TGI thumb oh. palm on the top, lifts up, misses the rim joist with it, and the nail goes in his thumb. Looks at me, holds it up in the air, goes, "I can't see my own blood. I'm gonna faint." I go over to him. I put his hand under my arm, so I, my back's to him. I pull the nail out. I clean it. I wrap it. I say, "Put a glove on it, and you can keep working, or you can go to the hospital and have a look at." It. No, I'll keep working. Never miss a day. Let it handle, and let, or let it handle. Let it heal, and oh, listen. That's not he the, was golden. That's not the norm, man. No, nope. it's come not. on. No, nope. that's why I said I no. lucked out with that kid. That's why I said I lucked out with that, that kid. That kid would have through. been in the cab or the Uber going to the hospital. Yep. Like, well, I drove him to work that day, so he would have had to because <laughs> I wasn't leaving <laughs> sight. <laughs> but John brings up a good point though, because you live like Conrad isn't wrong to be like, hey, I want to take my lunch. I get a lunch, mm-hmm. but we're but we're craning. So yeah. that that and that's a rarity. It's not like that every no, day. No, and I mean, chance, but. we you know we 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 take our our breaks appropriately. There's you know if we're in the middle of something that just doesn't make sense to stop what we're doing, you know, just push it back a little bit. You know, take an extra five minutes if you really feel you need to. But like we're in the process of a very specific task. Yeah, a very expensive piece of machinery on site. You know, he wasn't. He was able to run off. He grab a snack, grab his drink, you know, whatever. But it was, you know, we're we are we're hustling. It's like concrete guys, man. Yeah. When you're waiting for it and you're all ready for it. If it shows up a little late and it's digging into your lunch, it's digging into your lunch. Yeah. You got a boogie at that point. What it is. But you had, you know, maybe an extra twenty minutes, half an hour of hanging out leading up to it. Mm-hmm. So, you know. That's your break. Yeah. There's Those your guys break. don't pour a half a basement floor at four o'clock and go, Okay, it's four thirty, I'm going home. We'll see you tomorrow. No, you finish the pour. Green Book Talk, guys. Protecting outside workers. Heat stress, Lyme disease, West Nile virus, hazardous plants. These are all just some of the dangerous people who spend the summer working outside. Face. What else do they face working outside? Heat stress. I think just any any weather. You know. Weather. Basically weather. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what are we supposed to do as GCs for these employees? Provide shade shade work areas and have shaded areas to take a rest break this is all from the green book 
Doesn't that sound lovely? It's not, it does sound nice. I think I, think I read lawn chairs and daiquiris. And <laughs> I'm trying, no, I'm not reading that. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't cover the house this morning for you. <laughs> Increase the frequency and lengths of rest breaks. Schedule strenuous jobs in the cooler times of the day. Provide cool drinking water, probably Fiji, for workers every 20 <laughs> minutes. Have a buddy system for employees to watch each other for signs of overheating. Wear light clothing, which allows free air movement and sweat evaporation. That's a great... We should talk to roofers <laughs> about this. <laughs> yes. I feel like they're, they're all like, wearing no, black, no, man, and they're No all, shirts. They're all like, no shirts, yeah. smoking two packs a day. <laughs> so they go on and on because of Lyme disease and uh, black-legged... Ear ticks, uh, long sleeves, long pants. Well, technically speaking, for the Ministry of Labor, we're not supposed to be working in T-shirts. You're supposed to wear gloves, too, I think, now. But in a bubble? Now, is there a contradiction there? Because I'd like to know from Ministry of Labor, which I hopefully one day will have them on the show, if you're supposed to wear gloves and long sleeves, what if you're handling a table saw? Because you're not supposed to wear gloves or long sleeves handling a table saw. Hmm. That's more dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. So like strings in a sweater, right? But Same then thing. if you talk to Carlito, he takes all of his drawn strings out of his drag pants that he's walking around. <laughs> I think he does it for other reasons. Uh, wear clothes, a clothes footwear with socks. Wear light colored clothing so no ticks are easy to spot. Or they are easy to spot, sorry. Tuck your pants into your socks. Like, who makes this that, shit we up? actually have to do that? Is that a thing? Tuck your pants into your socks. Inspect your body after being in high-risk areas, especially in the areas with hair. Uh, West Nile virus. Okay? I can't read the rest of this. Just, <laughs> Check. Right. Sure. You're going to have to update Bro. the health and safety policies. <laughs> after a job, job site meeting after this. Uh, did we, I, I think the last point here was that the lack of new people coming into the industry, we talked about that, and the majority of those people are self-entitled pussies. I totally agree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I did not word that nicely. When no, I, I added those last three oh, words perfect. myself. I added those. I'll take the blame for self-entitled pussies. Uh, no, it's, it's unfortunate, and I'm trying to figure out, is it because there's other opportunities that are greater and better, or is like they, nobody wants to physically do a job? I, I, I Again, Instagram, you know, social media. I think it paints, kind of like you, I think you touched on a little bit, a, a very pretty picture. Fancy tools. Fancy work. Brand new tools. Yeah. You know, like the best of the best, you know, and then if you, if you look into what it costs to get the best of the best, obviously it takes good money. And, you know, I think they come in maybe expecting good money in order to afford the best of the best where, you know, sometimes you just got to shovel shit for your first little bit and you got to pay your dues, learn I agree. or hopefully learn pay attention, ask questions, you know, and there's no wrong question. Nope. Right? Nope. Ask. Ask as many questions. My, I, I love my two young guys, but they were supposed to cut a door out to raise it up. We're keeping the door. They used a reciprocating saw, and they got the door out, <laughs> but it could not go back in. Uh oh. So we had to have a conversation about asking questions, understanding the task you've been asked to do, you know, maybe paying attention because sometimes they like to talk a little bit together and having given them to these guys, both as a pair and separate, it's been figured out that when they're together, they pay less attention. They talk more to each other. It's more about the weekend, the weeknight, you know, your the, trade sitting. Yeah. But when they're apart, <laughs> I don't want to be a trade sitter, man. But when they're and that's why you don't have employees. Yeah. Oh. But when they're apart, both these guys said each of those kids did great. Yeah. They're still young. They're still new, but they did great. They asked a question. They were motivated to maybe grab a broom, do something other than stand there, right? And that's that's a tough part with who's coming into these trades. You might look out with like Clark's guy Lucas, who may be an old soul. You know, that's what it sounds like, right? Where unfortunately, I think again, social media and all the pretty pictures, you know, paint a different story for people coming in, and then they they get the hard truth when they come working for most people. You know, and that's that's a tough pill to swallow. I think I'm a very prayerful person. Like I'm always, I like people watching. I do, and that's why I love construction sites because you can just sit there and watch 
it unfold. And, and mo- most part, it's like, it's a symphony, right? It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But I, I've been noticing lately, uh, a lot of trades have been getting into Bitcoin, constantly checking their phone to see where it's at. And I'm like, you're not being productive. And you talked about it earlier, Clark, where it's a safety hazard at mm-hmm. that point. You're not paying attention to what's going on. Someone could be walking by with mm-hmm. a piece of lumber over their shoulder. Someone could be pulling a cord. If you're paying attention to your side hustle or whatever else is going on in your life, you're putting yourself and other people in danger. So I'm just noticing that these kids are doing that. There's, there's like some of this stuff is going on. No different than when I was at that age, probably, and you're playing around with stocks and mutual funds mm-hmm. and whatever, and you want to just keep... Just advice to you guys. If you guys are in, you guys are in. That's it. And, and you staring at it every single day doesn't do anything. So, and you don't lose unless you sell and it's down. And if you, you don't make and then until you sell, sell it and then it's up. That's just how it works. So you don't need to constant. I just, I, I thought it was kind of funny. And they do a little sneaky thing with the, the phone on the side of the pocket or something like that. And I'm like, dude, pay attention to what's going on. It's well, really- that comes back to two. Like, uh, you know, you're, you're on the books. You're getting paid. I'm yeah. paying you to do a job. Yeah. I, I don't own you, but you need to do the work that I'm paying you for eight, nine hours a day, whatever, and you get your breaks and you can take your phone out then and look at stuff. Or if you have an emergency call or whatever, like, you know, pretty lenient that way, but don't be on your phone or all the time. Because, yeah, it's, it is dangerous. It's not only are you wasting time, most likely. It, it could be dangerous too. Yeah, 100%. And plus with content, take the picture, do the video, put the phone away. It doesn't need to be posted right away, yeah. right now, today. Yeah. It can be done tomorrow. Do it when you go home on your own time or whatever you want. I remember having an argument with somebody and it was like, yeah, but it's Instagram. It means it's supposed to happen right now. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> wow. It's just only, <laughs> if it's happening tomorrow, is this, did it still, the tree? Did it go down? It did. It went down. Trust me. I got epoxy going on it right now. Right? Like, it's just <laughs> happening. It's going to happen. I don't care about it, man. I think we covered a lot, guys. What do you guys think? I don't know. Yeah. You, you guys nervous going, about the yeah. future? No, no, we got time. But I mean, you guys nervous about the future? I am for sure. Yeah. There's going to be a huge loss 100%. of tradespeople. Massive loss. It, they're retiring. They yeah, started already. That's exactly it. The I, retiring group is, is, is in like the next five years. Yeah, Ma- five. There's going to be a massive dent. Which I, th- I think it's good to be mindful of, be weary of, and watch how that plays out and progresses. But... Also, with that said, for, for guys in our position, I think it should be beneficial if there's less people out there. Yeah. Um, where but, but we have less people wanting to get into. Yeah. And that, that's, that's going to be the tough part of trying to entice those people to come in. And that's where, again, I, I reached out to a, a carpentry program. There's, there's, I think there was 30 students in that program. You know, I grabbed the two guys that I got. And I, I do believe that there is something to build upon there. Okay. You know, and whether I could take the other 28 and feel, have that same feeling, I don't know, but I feel that I have something worth building upon. I, and I, I feel that they feel the same way. You know, they do truly want to do it. They spent some money to go through that program. They kind of got, you know, the shaft, I think for the time, obviously, yeah, that they, the, they, you know, did yeah. it through where maybe if they started it now, they would come out with a better experience, more knowledge. But obviously there's going to be a limitation of what that, that program can give them as well. Um, Are the schools good, guys? Are they delivering? I, I, I went to Georgian College. I got a big sigh from Clark here. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel s- <coughs> schools have the time, money, or resources to put the proper training into the students. I think it, they get shown something. How about we just take the school and put it into the job site? Well, that would be lovely, but I feel like you get the, they get like, so one of John's guys, we're talking about building a wall and I say, have you done this before? Well, I did it once where I did it in school. I did it once. Okay. So that school has gone. You have cut this rafter one time. You now know how to do this. You're signed off. Right. So that's, that's, that's scary. That's my problem is you don't get, like, I remember wood shop when I was in high school, here's a pro- build something, build a project. I built a hope chest. Right, fifteen-year-old kid in grade—I think I was grade nine. I'm building a hope chest, and I—it took me all semester to build. Out of what kind of wood? Uh, we were using oak, and we were using some pine. It wasn't very expensive okay, stuff. Yeah, it was all so cut off, so high school wood. Red oak, okay. yeah, okay. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> no, it's right. just fine. It's still hard. Yeah. It still teaches you lessons. Yeah, so it's—I'm sure it looks beautiful. But like nowadays, it's like okay, so 
you're going to build one door for that hope chest. That's your project for the year. You don't actually get that exposure anymore, no. right? So that's kind of my... You don't my get to perfect your skills. Yeah. And like when I got into when I got into carpentry, I was looking for work. Like my dad would say to me, you can come to work with us three days this week because this guy's not here, but we can't afford to hire you as an employee. Right? So I would have to go on to stuff like Kijiji and look for work because that's what I wanted to so do. So why don't these kids volunteer and perfect their skills that's i don't know because they put me in the corner and i will cut all your blocking because i think everything nowadays costs so much money and everybody is so uh materialistic sometimes with these new tools everything else they want to go they want to make money and they don't see the value in the knowledge they see the value in the dollar and they can go pick up a job anywhere because everybody's hiring now and this is hard work was it? It was somebody was telling me last year or the year before. I don't know if it was on the show or it was probably just communication. Somebody was giving up all their corded tools. Not damaged, not crappy tools, just giving up all their corded tools for free. And he couldn't give it away. None of the kids oh. wanted it. Hmm. It wasn't garbage tools. It was well-brand tools, but it was all corded because he was switching to a platform of battery. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's like, wouldn't you, as a kid, wouldn't you like, give it to me? Oh, yeah. That's Heck awesome. yeah. Give it to me, man. I'll take it and I'll use it. I can't tell you how many tools my dad's I wrecked. But you perfecting your skills. Yeah. yeah. That's where the, I guess, the disconnect is from the school to the job site. Yeah. There's that one little moment in between the two where they don't have an opportunity to perfect their skills. They get on the job site and either they get along with the wrong employer and they basically cater to making that kid not stay in the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or that kid is tough enough, like some of the kids that you guys are working with, and they stay in the industry, right? You no, know, like these guys came with, you know, mediocre stuff. You know, they didn't have a lot of money to go buy. You know, you know, one didn't have a pouch. One had a kind of a crappy pouch. Um, you know, they had a, a mitt full of a few little tools. So we went to the store, didn't go for the top shelf stuff, but I, I looked at them and I said, I will invest you know, a couple hundred bucks in each of you because I need you guys to show me some initiative and what you can do. And if you, if you, if I ask you to go hammer that in or go do that over there and you don't have that tool, that doesn't help me. That doesn't doesn't. show me what you can do. So we started there. And then from there, you know, they see the, my other guys with their tools like, Oh, you know, I'd like that, you know, an impact like that or, you know, what have you. So the way I operate is I will get that tool you know, we have a, a ton of tools at, at the disposal at, at the shop, but, you know, your, 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 your main stuff, have yeah. an impact, maybe have a skill saw, you know, have your pouch set up. Miter box. Miter box. <laughs> That's what they're all getting for Christmas. <laughs> That's um, his new nickname. <laughs> the miter box. The miter box. You know, it, but, well, you know, again, someone got a, a saw. Again, we didn't go buy the top of the line no. saw. We just, we bought a decent Makita saw, you know, a couple batteries, whatever. And it slowly comes off their check. But that's them showing me they want to invest in themselves. Yeah, that's important. Which is which is what you need. You know, like it, it's too often you see, you know, I've had older guys where I've offered the same deal to that have worked for me. And, ah, you know, that's, that's a lot of money to put out. Yet, you know, the smokes are going and, you know, like they're showing up hungover. So they're obviously drinking the night before. So they got money for that but they don't have money to invest in themselves, to make more money, to be they're, more They're not thinking valuable. long-term. No. So again, seeing these young guys, you know, maybe not coming out with the best knowledge out of that program, but they're willing to invest in themselves, which shows me that I think there's still hope. You know, it might be harder finding and weeding out guys like that, you know, than it used to be, but I think there's still hope there. But I, I think it just takes us longer, longer to find guys now mm-hmm. to, to hire, to keep up with, demand are you guys even trying the uh job seeking like the platforms that you're not even indeed i've tried i have yeah. tried indeed yep. yeah i've hired a handful of guys yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah they've come and gone but i've hired a, a good handful of guys through indeed yep or i had a guy call me today i haven't been i told him to text me i, I shot back a, a few key questions i had for him i have yet to go through it but one of the questions was how did you find out about me and Maybe just check that. Quick. Sure. But, but well, I tried even the, the last guy I just hired, I did a two, two day paid interview. So he just came, worked with me for two days and I paid him and just to see, you know, just to feel it out. 
And it went well? It went really well. And I, I hired him. He starts Monday. Okay, cool. So we'll see what happens I, I, it's there. something new. I've never done that before. And I was like, oh, all right, I'll try it. So, so this guy here from, you know, kind of what I, I read quickly, uh, probably more of a laborer. I think there's probably some skills in there to build upon. He touched on drywall. He touched on some framing in there. But he had found me through a local tile store. Okay. So he had the initiative to go to a supplier yeah. and ask, ask for a list of contractors. Yeah. And then he started cold calling. I think these kids should actually get on job sites. I think they should walk around yeah. neighborhoods and yeah. just see what's going on. There's a lot of action going on. And just watch for a second. You'll get a sense of who the GC is. You'll get a sense of who the trades are. And just try to go up to the right person. If they're not the right person, ask for the right person. Introduce 100%. yourself and leave your number. Leave an email and say that you're looking for work. Yep. And you'd be surprised. I think a lot of people will give you a shot. Yeah. A, a, yeah. a relationship I cultivated in the early days was based on me driving to that job where the gentleman looked at me and said i should have had a contract for the extra 300 bucks a few doors up there's a brand new spec build going on i saw it wasn't drywalled yet so i stuck my head in and asked if they needed a drywaller i did probably 10 different projects for these guys see yeah mm -hmm. it's worth it yeah but the, but but it's lacking in that younger generation to get well back they don't want to do that initiative right yeah. yeah i don't know if they're scared or they don't uh, have get the on your bicycle put the hockey cards in the spokes and start riding around the they neighborhood should, honestly man. that's all anyone's but, listening but they be getting to the uber and then going to stop multiple stops in the uber <laughs> but yeah i don't know they should work, tons of work out there in the trades i'm tons. still amazed at that tons. those are the ones that are listening to the show they're the ones that are the, they're quiet but they listen Mostly to the show. Yeah. And that's why you need a platform like this. Yeah, that's yep. why, right? So because a lot of people are giving up great advice and then they are they might do that now. They might actually go on your job site, find you guys in that yep. area, right? So everyone knows where you guys are based on the show. So they'll get an idea of where you guys are working. Yep. Stop in. Or anyone You're in your local area. Say hello. See anyone. I yeah. know you guys. Stop I've in. seen you guys on the show. And we're all on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. Easy access. Yep. I think it's time for the 12 questions, gentlemen. You ready? I know we'll do it again, Jason, because you haven't done it on cameras. Yeah. You know about this? Yep. Did you guys study? I sent them to you. <laughs> we, we may have been People have been here, asking me to send it before so they can study it, so they can come up with. But I do like, uh, I would say, out of all the video shows that we've been doing lately, um, I had Matt there from uh, Rescom, and I did ask him about what he would do as another ad a profession, and he said OnlyFans. I thought that was <laughs> great. I didn't know That's we right. could go that way, it. but... Love it. <laughs> what did I say? Dancer? Dancer for money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite construction word? Jeez. We'll go this Com way. Completed. Done. Yeah. Let's go. A little more. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken by a framer. <laughs> Butt joint. Butt joint. <laughs> what is your least favorite construction word? I didn't really have time to think about this one. I was, we were doing it in the parking lot. Um, maybe start with Clark first. A lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I did a, a few of mine are from uh, from my drywall background. Anyways, hot mud. <laughs> I, I dislike the term hot mud. Hot. It's why? Why did they? Why did it get called hot? Because as you it, had no I, time. I, I, no, as as it sets, it gives off heat. So any sheet, yeah, any any setting okay, compound, right, sheet yeah. rock, durable, and stuff yeah. like that. Durable, hot. Yeah. Chemical yeah. reaction. The chemical yeah, reaction that's why. gives off heat. It just qualifies. You guys remember those pictures I did of all the different dirt materials and shit on my face and yes. shit? Mm -hmm. oh, fuck, put plaster on your face, man. It's that great, great for your hair. That was the Best worst out of all those materials, man. I, I was burning my skin. The lime. Mm -hmm. I fucking I could imagine. I, could, I was screaming, get it off, get it off. Uh, what was your answer there? Least favorite construction word? I'd probably say wrong. Whenever tell, anyone tells me it's wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. What turns you on, guys, in construction? You want me to start over here? Yeah, you start. Again, drywall. I just, you <laughs> know what? It. Framing's great. You're a mutter. <laughs> All that stuff's great. But when you start to see the walls turn white, shape. things close in, take shape. Shape. I just enjoy that. Yeah, that's true. Level five? <laughs> level, level six. Level six. <laughs> I gotta try, try to be better. <laughs> Clark, uh, a good foundation. No shit. That's square, right. huh? That's square. We've been getting a lot of like fairly decently square ones, but they're up and down. Literally, like my, my transit gets a workout. 
Really? Yeah. I transit every every floor. Like I'm I'm huge on. But I have no timeline on putting a floor on a house. There's, you can't rush a floor because if that floor is perfect, the rest of the house goes up perfect. Of course. Lumber is so all over the place right now. If I can get that floor as close to perfect as I can, then the rest of the house should come together. Do you have a quick cut in your arsenal? Yep. That's sad that you've got a quick cut in your arsenal. Yeah, I got concrete grinders, everything. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, wow. I, I have a drill and I carry the redhead anchors because I have had anchors that don't catch. I have had anchors that... The foundation is so dipped, I can't get the nut on them. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you, yeah. It wow. wasn't ours. Wow. <laughs> no, I can imagine the stories. Yep. They nope. want to so get in, get out. If if I can get a good foundation starting from the ground up, it's everything goes nicely. Jason? A clean site. I love a nice clean right. site. I love keeping a clean site. I want to. That's true. Yeah. What turns you off in construction? Well, talking about clean sites, electricians. Oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> Their inability <laughs> to use a fucking broom. A vacuum. They should all Anything. have vacuums by now. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. yeah, plug in your wiring. Try it out. You know. <laughs> Battery power vacuum, I was saying. <laughs> What's yours, Clark? Um, what turns me off in construction? Probably people rushing things. Spending, everybody's trying to rush everything nowadays, and quality's just going downhill. Mm-hmm. So everything gets rushed, everything gets destroyed. Can't build it fast enough, eh? Yeah, callbacks, not yeah. fun. Yeah. Callbacks? Yeah, yeah, they're not fun. What's your favorite curse word, gentlemen? Could be a phrase as well. Tried and tested. Just fuck. fuck. Yeah. Worst case, Ontario. That's a Rickyism right there. <laughs> <laughs> I always say another day in paradise. Like, oh, how's your day going? Oh, just another day in paradise. Another day in paradise. What's your favorite vehicle, gentlemen? Anything in the world doesn't have to be construction related. F-250. <laughs> doesn't Easy have one. to be construction. Can somebody turn off his mic? Uh, <laughs> I know. Eh? <laughs> I love my bike. I got uh, got into motorcycles, you know. Three, when? Uh, two years ago. That's it? Yeah. I was late. I, I did a bit of dirt biking, and I got a few buddies. Oh, the knees? Not bad so far. Okay. All I right. Got f- I got a few buddies that would, uh, you know. Got a few stories of, of how good I was in the beginning. <laughs> What'd you buy? Uh, I started with a Shadow 750. That's a good buy. You know, got comfortable on that pretty quick. Up yeah. to a Cowie Vaquero 1700. And now I'm on a, uh, a Harley Street Bob 1800. Ooh. Yeah, in little, two years? A little more pep in the step. You went through three bikes like that in yeah. two years. I got very comfortable very fast. Oh, hey, you're definitely swiping right on Tinder, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two years, three bikes like that. I, I still got my original. The Ducati? 1999, man. Monster. It's a, it's a 900 now. Those are nice bikes. I still love it. Yeah, the Harley will be with me for, for some time. Okay, so you'll yeah. hang on to that one. Yeah. Good for you. Best vehicle, 69 Charger. I had an opportunity to build one as a kid growing up, and we built it. And well, I was I was a teenager in a previous relationship, and her dad was into that stuff. And I built uh, a couple of them, and I'd, if I could buy one today, I would. So why didn't you just stay in the relationship for the car? Yeah, it's, <laughs> some things just aren't worth it. <laughs> Yours is the, the Ford? Uh, it's multi-purpose, but I have my bike, too. Oh, I, okay. my, I got a Honda Rebel. 1100 it's nice it's 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 reliable it's a honda i changed my answer from ford too <laughs> <laughs> least favorite vehicle in the world e-bikes oh <laughs> on the highway oh. anywhere 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 with their e-bike license plate <laughs> and all their e-bike insurance and they're driving <laughs> in the middle of the lane Another case of beer on the back. Yeah. <laughs> with the bungee cord. <laughs> Doubling with a buddy of theirs. <laughs> the, the pass- I want to see an e-bike with the sidecar. Yeah. The passenger <laughs> with the see. helmet. The, the, with the, the, dirt bike, the dirt bike helmet. Yeah. Pull down below the chin. Yeah. <laughs> on the, the rider sidewalk. without a helmet. Ford F-250. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, he's going to jab at you. Eh? Eating. Eating. 250. Yeah. I, I'd have to second John. And Barry, I don't know what is there. Is there insane? Everybody's doing e-bikes? I think they're handing them out. Wow. There, there's a there's a lot. It's alarming. And they're on the sidewalk. They're in the road. They're they're on the boardwalk. It's dangerous. Coming. Winter's it's, coming. It's dangerous. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're, oh, still they're out, out in the winter. They're yeah. still out there. Oh, they yeah. just get more onto the road. <laughs> get out of the slush. <laughs> yeah. oh, you, you'd be surprised. I'll try to get yeah. some pictures and videos for you. <laughs> oh, I don't like them, man. <laughs> what construction sound or noise do you guys love? Oh, 
the big piles, like the town and I beams, like doing bridges. That's the one you love. No, oh no, I hate that. Okay, go oh, okay. You're ahead. I hate that one. What do you love? I ha- Clark and I were talking about this. I could like skill saw, like hearing a good yeah. skill saw going. The sound of not binding, pristine production. Yeah. Yeah. Nail yeah. guns going, yeah. Symphony, saws, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. Symphony. Yeah, it's, it's a cool sound. Oh. The sound of an F-250 starting. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning. Dun, 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 you know it's a nice. good day when it starts. <laughs> <laughs> Plug in in the summertime. What construction sound noise you guys hate? That was the piles? Yeah, yeah. They're so loud. When you put a brand new blade on a saw and the kid just binds the crap out of <laughs> it. Oh, man, I hate that screaming, huh? Yeah, and you hear it stop, and it's a corded skill saw, and it stops. You're, like, picture, you're picturing some long black-haired girl in a white dress oh. coming out of a well, man. Like, it's <laughs> just like, holy, stop, stop the saw. Oh, Compressors. You, know, you, you don't like s- compressors? Uh, I, I like it because it, it usually means work's happening. Yes, but on but all the time. On mm-hmm. all the time, and, you know... Usually, again, if I if I'm there, I'm I'm probably trying to deal with a, deal with a problem or have a conversation with somebody because, again, as we all know, I don't use tools anymore. Um, yeah, it's it's tough to do what I need to do at that point. Yeah. It's great for the guys, but it's tough for me. Or you yeah. come on site and they have a. The stereo is just blasting. And that I don't and, like. And you can't even talk. You're like, I have a hear the compressor. You, like that. Turn it off. Yeah. Or, like turn it down. What profession other than your own would you guys like to attempt? I electrician. Any, like uh, another oh, trade? There we go. Yeah. Uh, I would try commercial diving. Ooh, wow. Commercial diving? I recreational dive and enjoy it. And I think that'd be kind of cool. Where have you do- uh, dove into? Just in Georgian Bay. Okay. Right yeah. I got a buddy that does some pretty uh, wicked stuff, welding and fabricating. It looks... Uh, custom stuff. Eh? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I know. Yeah. You know, he has uh, custom exhaust. He's actually doing some... Uh, exterior facade, uh, some overhangs, and some architectural details for us on a, a building downtown Barrie. Nice. And, yeah, he does a little bit of everything. Started welding garbage cans years ago, and uh, and now he's doing custom, you know, custom fabrication. Nice. I like that. Cool. Uh, what profession do you guys never want to do? <laughs> roofer. You don't want to be a roofer. No. I, hands down. Those guys got it hard. <laughs> no, no thanks. I'm sending you all the roofing work I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything behind a desk like an accountant or something. I just couldn't sit still. Office job. Yeah. I did one semester of accounting and I, I quit. Did you really? Yes. A whole semester? Yeah. You night school. to the end? Night school. How did that go? Wow. Working full time at a building at the building supply store and then going from seven to ten PM to learn accounting. Oh, I'm su- surprised I'm still here. Like slowest <laughs> hours of your life. Oh eh? my god. <laughs> Last question, gentlemen. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Welcome. From one carpenter to another, nice sock tan. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a shorts guy at the summertime. I like it, man. Get a beauty. He burns in the sun. I I, I don't burn. I I, I know why everybody says that, but I don't burn. (laughs) It's because you're ginger. Yeah, no, no, not at all. <laughs> the lobster? Lobster on the job site? Yeah. yeah. No, I freckle like crazy, okay. and I'll tan, but it's very rare I get a good sunburn. Don't worry. You don't have to do any taping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a guy. <laughs> Gentlemen, yeah. thank you so much, man. John, yeah. thanks so much for coming down. Uh, thanks really for appreciate having it. Us. Thanks, Clark. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, Jason. Thanks, Manny. Honestly, man, it's been a blast to see you guys again yeah. and then see you, you guys for the first time or appreciate second it. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, McNeil Construction owner McNeil.ca, mean, sorry, McNeilConstruction.ca, and it's John with no H at McNeilConstruction.ca. And Clark's uh, Clark at Walker CFW. What's CFW stuff? Custom frameworks, just shorter. Ah, that's right, .com. And then Walker CFW on Facebook, and the same thing on Instagram. And then Jason with Guest, Constru- uh, Guest Contracting Inc. Tile Time. Yeah, I started another company. Started, How's that going? It started as a joke and. Yeah, we so do. you're doing all the tiling? Uh, me and my lead hand, Stefan, yeah. Lots wow. of tile. Love tile. you got guys in their 20s that want to get out. Oh, I love it. I love tiling. So much fun. Wow. It's hard on your body, man. <laughs> Call me crazy. Uh, are you doing large <laughs> slabs and everything, too? Or uh, no, I haven't gotten in any large slab stuff. No, none of that yeah. stuff. Triple W, guestcontracting.com and guest.contracting at gmail.com.
Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you it. so much, man. It's fun. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Appreciate We're out of here.